betting on a game. No woman's gonna tell us what to do. And I've been over here just drinking beer and making that noise. Baby, I'm hanging with the fellas, busting with the boys. Bro. There you go. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 257. It is January 2nd, 2024. Hope you had an absolutely incredible Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's holiday season, we'll just call it. And congratulations to the University of Michigan Wolverines for punching their ticket to the national championship along with the Washington Huskies. Let's um Let's talk about our presenting sponsor for a little bit. They, yep. All right, Mitch. Way to, way to chime in, Mitch. Good job, yes, Mitch. I appreciate that. That's big of you guys. Hey, I do. Hey, congratulations. Thanks, man. Congratulations. Thank you. So let's talk about uh, a family with an unstoppable grit, and they are the official partners of Boston with the Boys family, and that is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. The first ever Silverado Heavy Duty ZR2 joins the franchise to make Chevy ZR2 the only tr truck brand with a full line of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventure takes you. With the exclusive Multimatic DSSB dampers, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views, the Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2, a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head over to Chevy.com and check out Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official trucks of Bustin' with the Boys. Who's got it better than the Chevy Silverado? Nobody. Nobody. Blake Corn, very much like the Chevy Silverado, dude. Let's give a tip of the cap to the boy. That is literally exceeding most touchdowns in Michigan history, rushing, to, rushing touchdowns in Michigan history in that game, in that moment. He was down, I think he scored 14 touchdowns this year. Like, it was like, hey, he's off in the distance. We'll see what happens. But the guy, truly, after an ACL, all that stuff, it was, it, dude, it was so, it was so fucking great to see. It really was. You got to bleep the F word. But, dude, I hated yesterday <laughs> until the end. I hated it. Literally woke up, got excited, went to the Chandler's house for New Year's, and we're kind of talking. This girl, Danae, she played softball at Alabama. We're kind of chirping back and forth a little bit. I showed the little videos I was going to post. I told her about the whole situation we talked about before, about you guys plotting against me, but really it was just Garrett plotting against me. And so I thought, hey, it's me against the world of the bus, essentially, which it kind of has been this whole entire year. Then I wake up in the morning, hit my little routine, hit my little workout, and right around 1 p.m., I'm nervous. Nervous to the point where, man, what if they just get blown out again? What if this just happens again? What if all of the things that everybody said, the men in this bus, happens? And it was an incredible game. You had, like, when that first play happened and J.J. was trying to throw out a bounce and he just throws it to the Alabama defender, I, I just start laughing out loud, like, oh, my God, this could be so bad. <laughs> yeah. This could be so bad. Fortunately, uh, you know, they, it, it wasn't a turnover right there to start yeah. the game. But. I mean, it might it's just there was a turnover just, like, three minutes later. I'm <laughs> sure every Michigan fan was probably sitting there when he threw that pick, like, Oh, no. Everybody. You just felt it was so tight. Everyone felt so tight and everything. Yeah. And then they see the defense get pressure. They did. Like, I think they sacked defense them. Defense like, played well. Defense played outstanding. The line got after their O-line, yeah. Which is crazy because you get a guy like uh, Milrow, who is just a freak athlete, having yeah. those contained rushes, running those uh, those inside games mm -hmm. during pass plays. I, I they, did, they had an incredible game plan. And I was very impressed with the back end of defense, the defense too, the way they were able to run with those athletes, because that is the fear of how how fast. True, but I was I didn't I didn't understand, and I owe I owe the Michigan defense an apology. I didn't realize their game was like that. I'm looking at the the back seven, and they are they are some goons, bro. Oh yeah, Will Johnson, and then I always forget the other kid's name, but he's number zero. They're both insane. Thank you very much. And then then that that more kid. The safety, like all of them in the back end, that Colston kid, Brentwood, Brentwood kid, Nashville, Tennessee, like they just have dogs. And dude, one of the most impressive people on that team is number 78, their D lineman, that their nose tackle. He is a unit. Kid's like 350, but you see him every time he's in, they they revolve guys around so much. He's sprinting to the ball. Remember, he hawked that dude down against Penn State. Mm -hmm. Just amazing. But 
very uncharacteristic of Michigan the way they had as many like uh, miscues as they did. The we, the special teams was what was killing y'all, kill, killing us, dude. Because you guys like uh, like. Jim, uh, who, who, Coach Moore, is it Coach Moore? Yeah, Sharon Moore. Their offensive staff who put together that game plan, like they were doing a great job, like with all the shifts, with the motions after yes. the shift, like messing with their eyes, because you have to, you have to do a good job of adjusting, like defensively. Uh, but I thought that Michigan just had a a, a great game plan to kind of go along. Like, of course, I was one, I was like rooting for Alabama, but then by the end of it, you're like, fuck, man, like they are playing a solid game. And special teams almost killed you guys. Yeah, it was. Like it was really was like then that cat at the end of the game trying to field the ball, oh, and then it's, it's know. backed up on like the inch yard line. And then you're thinking, you, you got to do a, you can't even take a knee. Yeah, he's you just gotta, you got to pile like, it in there. What if we lost on a safety? But the thing, the, yeah. So you, I think you're right. Like, like strategically, the game plan, everything. Like Michigan had the better game plan. They were executing better, especially in the first half. The special teams plays like muffing that punt in, mm -hmm. on the, in the first quarter when you're getting the ball back for your second. You're, then you just spot Alabama a seven right there. Then the, you go through the game, you, and this is what I love. I'll actually get to what I love about what Michigan did in these situations. But at the end of the game, you're going in. You have a, one drive to go and win it. 45 seconds left on the clock. And you put this white boy out here. No disrespect to him, but like that's the first punt I've seen him I've seen him catch the entire game. It, it was always was, everybody's been muffing the punts. It was one muff, and the other kid. There was a couple more punts. This kid caught it just fine, and he goes be he goes inside the ten. He was inside the ten, backed up near the seven. Up. That like that's just the awareness <laughs> game where you're like, bro, just let it go. And if they down it, that's fine. But you like that could have been essentially 2015 Michigan State. Yeah, every where, special teams meeting in the country is if you're fielding a punt inside the inside the ten, especially if you're backing up to go get it. You let it go. Let that thing go. Yeah. Let it go. This is what I really liked about uh, Michigan and the trust they have in their players. The first series of Michigan happens. The almost pick, they end up going three and out, and then the defense gets the ball back. The whole punt thing happens. Eventually, Michigan's obviously back on the field. Instead of just going, all right, JJ almost threw a pick when he was throwing the ball away. We're going right. to run it. And they it was 7 nothing too. Like, yeah, 7 nothing. First. Immediately goes and gets the ball out of JJ's hand for an easy completion, getting his confidence back up. This 82 kid, when he muffs the punt, he had a play down the field, gets him 10, 11 yards. And like one series later, like they're going back to these guys and not just keeping them cold. And then eventually like relying on them later in the game, yeah. which I thought was great. Roman Wilson, the fourth quarter uh, on fourth and three, Blake Corum, like you said, with the motions and everything, going from that trips to that bunch trips and then flipping the back. He did a great job of getting out and has an X play, 20, 25 yards. Roman Wilson has a abysmal block in the back. A just like senior wide receiver does everything right, has the block in the back where you're just like, oh my God, they're literally trying to fucking ruin it. They're trying to ruin it. Because I don't know about you guys, but when that last drive, I'm thinking they're going to eat up all the clock and in my world, score. And in that situation, based on how the second half has gone, you go for two in that situation. To, in my head, I thought they might go for two as well. Yeah, but like, fuck it, like. But with one one thirty eight left in the game, uh, Alabama's got timeouts. I think it was the right move to hit the extra point. But if you were to get, get down where it's like ten seconds, where, well, hey boys, let's just win it here. Balls in our hands. Mm -hmm. They obviously made the right choice, but I love the fact that they went back to dudes that were making that, that made a couple of mistakes, and that shit was cool. I also love the referees letting the boys play. I thought the punter. I thought the punter getting kicked, hit. That was a flag. I thought JJ on that, that like JP said, that legacy catch, when he got hit, that could have been a penalty. That last drive, JJ runs it. He's on the Alabama sideline, gets thrown to the ground outside the white paint. That's a penalty. But they let it ride, and they were calling it evenly. So that is, I, I, did, I did appreciate that. But, and I told G this earlier, because I'm, it was a great game. You've had a lot of success in your fandom. That game, if Michigan doesn't make the uncharacteristic mistakes, is a double-digit win for Michigan. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. We're just playing the hypothetical game at this point. Yeah, I mean, is this is this podcast just be me talking the whole time or? No, I thought at jump some in? point. We, hey, Gary, how'd you feel about the game? Uh, you know, obviously disappointing. Um, it's you know, Taylor's right. That was the worst feeling of anxiety the entire day leading up 
one o'clock hit and I'm pacing around. I'm like, what do I do? Like, this sucks. Closer it gets, your nerves set in. You're like, holy crap, here we go. First play, pick. I'm like, oh, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. Second play, I don't even remember what happens, but JJ converts a third down on that first drive where he throws a laser on the sideline. They review it, guy's toes in. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. we got to finish plays. Obviously, we get the ball back. Jace breaks one, touchdown. I feel a little better. And then the game kind of stills after Michigan immediately drives down its course. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, shit, here we go. Like, they're going to move the ball. And so the whole back and forth for forever was extremely stressful. Errors were all over the field for both sides. Who do you put the game on? <sighs> Who were you most disappointed in? Or what were you most disappointed in? Our game plan, for sure. The game plan on offense, I think, was immediately set back because of Michigan's game plan on defense. They came with pressure immediately to start the game. And that's how you get Milrow off his game. You can't give him time because the longer he extends plays is where he beats you. And there was no extending plays. I think play calling was interesting. When we had success running the ball, we'd get inside the 30 and start throwing screens. We even had success doing that all year. Um, I think, you know, there's big mistakes in big moments that back you up to where you have to settle for three that could have put the game away hopefully um you know it was tough i think there's like four plays that michigan had that were perfect um on third and that fourth down conversion i mean it was just you got beat kind of thing because the game was called so fair there is no like ifs and buts you know it's just kind of didn't execute for sure how uh, I think the month off hurt us more than it helped, or I think the month off hurt us and it helped Michigan. How sick are you that it was Michigan and knowing you're coming into work next day with the boy? It sucks for sure. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it sucks. Um, I think because of how the game went, it makes it a little bit better in a weird way. It could have been, like Taylor said, like it definitely could have been way worse. I mean, we only had two touchdowns and they were running the ball and then somehow we don't run the ball the rest of the game um yeah it blows um but you get beat and that happens so now michigan's just got to go finish the job i think it was interesting how nick saban like if you give up five sacks in the first half after the third sack the kid's running for his life i just don't understand why a coach the, arguably the best college football coach of all time, right? Doesn't make a change there from a protection standpoint, getting another guy in there in protection, getting a tight end, keeping the back end more, and just making it a little more simple for Milrow. Like, give him some easy throws to complete. Either, they were either trying to take shots right. or... or run and, and in the third quarter, like, it opens back up. Michigan has done an amazing job in the third quarter of outscoring their opponents. There's a crazy statistic on that. But they ran the ball well. And then they would go to throw and complete pass. Well, then they get another chunk play for 10, 11 yards. And it's like, you can see the key to the, the, the path to success for Alabama was just running the ball until they said, stop. Yep. That's, that's, I think that's just where, where it was. Too many like third and longs like that. And there, you guys are, longs, Alabama's running the ball on third and long. Like second and long and third and long happened too much for Alabama on offense. And yeah. Like if you're, who's the, who's the OC? Tommy Reese. Tommy Reese, Saban, like, you know you just got to be disappointed because they're talking about it coming out of halftime, but the O-line was just missing on some of these uh, on some of these blitzers. That's or just getting beat because uh, Milrow's not a cat. Like, I don't mind them taking shots, but then there's some times where they might have a guy open and he's not even able to get the ball off because somebody's in his face. Not, like, can't read. The back gets uh, across face late, tackle kind of doesn't know what to do. He gets smacked. Like, he, there were so many, like, third and longs there from was, Bama. There weren't a lot of opportunity for him to make a second read because he had to get it out. And that's where I think... And then Milrow, he, he wasn't hitting everything. Like, he, no. that's, that's what hurt. He's not, like, an accurate... Well, there was no flow to the offense. Every play was starting from scratch, it felt like. And yep. that's why I think that Michigan game plan in the first half with bringing heat early, don't let him get comfortable kind of thing. I think going into half... We, yeah, are lucky that it's only a three-point game. I thought Michigan going in at half being excited to have the lead 
and us being pissed off was really going to work in our favor in the second half. And it almost you guys were controlling the second half for the most part. Just, just, there was just no points getting put on the board. It's you like Michigan felt 30. like they dominated the first half, but it was only thirteen to ten. Exactly. That's what made me feel good because it because wasn't yeah. great ball, and it was only a three point game. And then yeah, when we score or when we kick three to go or no when we score. It goes 17 10. I was like, all right, here we go. Now the defense has just got to play defense. Mm -hmm. But great game plan on offense, too. The, the pre snap shit is like, you know. The pre snap motions and shifts were next level. Well, the bunch, I mean, the first touchdown for Blake Quorum is the best. I told you this earlier. It's the best play call I've ever seen. I don't know why everyone doesn't do this. You have three wide receivers run basically the same route on different levels that builds a wall for whoever's guarding the running back to have to fight through. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the first touchdown? Yeah. yeah. And you got to, somehow you got to match speed with Blake. It's like, that's a touchdown. He didn't get touched. Yeah, but yeah. if the backers have better eyes, the other backer would well, see that's it. Well, that's think, where 32 was pointing. Right. Right when he goes across right away, like, hey, you, you, you. But he got his eyes to the bunch. Second half adjustment, they, Bama reacted quicker to that stuff pre-snap, I think. And that's what helped kind of slow that down a little bit. But then as the game went on, that that fourth and two, I, that was my least favorite situation of the entire game. When we got the stop on third down, I was like, all right, fourth down's even worse than third down. Like, this sucks. Yeah, and it, it, you brought up a good point, too, in the beginning. Like, I didn't know. I looked up JJ's stats after the game and 233 touchdowns, 66% completion. Yeah. That in, because I, I was watching the game and they were playing these big replays. And I told you, like, it was like the third quarter. We're backed up inside the 10. And there's a tight end. He goes and he just does like a little hitch. And the, he's blanketed by the linebacker. Those are the linebacker. And it's an obvious, like, he's, it was broken up immediately. Well, on the far side of the field with the one receiver, he had the separation from you to me. Where you put it right there. That's an X play getting you, to, getting you towards midfield. And there just seemed like there were some plays here and there. You're like, yo, what is going on? There was a, there was a deeper play where receiver had great separation, came back to the ball, but the ball was just a little too high, overthrown a little too high. But incredibly impressive, the poise. Incredibly impressive, the poise, and be able to fight, fight through that. That play right there with Roman Wilson at the end of the game, like with like two minutes left, got tipped. And that was a pick, dude. That was a pick. And it was just for him to go up and get that. And that is right after, right after he had the block in the back call. Yeah. Which I think is just makes it better. This is the best part about Michigan. When I watched, I didn't watch all of Texas and uh, Washington, but when mistakes were happening on Alabama or Texas or Washington, you could see like safeties. Like there was one where uh, one guy slipped out towards the Michigan sideline and they didn't do a good job of exchanging it. The safety starts to go back. And even before the play's over, he's already putting his hands up and then running to it. When plays were happening, I didn't see one time like a palms up type of bad body language thing. Right. And it's kind of, to me, that's just, that's just cool culture. That's a cool culture deal. And it just fired me up, bro. Like yeah. this shit just fired me up that they're legit good. Cause we all had doubts. Like, I mean, you guys obviously all picked Alabama, like even going in, I mean, going into the game, I'm having doubts. I'm like, man, what if you see big 10 just getting mopped all over the floor, Penn state, Ohio state, uh, Iowa, shout out Jack and their, and their big win. Like you just think, man, we are. Maybe we're just a bad, bad conference, which I would now argue that Maybe we got the best conference. Well, I, I think, we got I think if Ohio conference. State has all their has their quarterback, has their wide receivers play, if Penn State has any of their guys play, like it's a different ball game. It is a different ball. Game. It's a different ball game. Now, do I think the Bay Ten should take credit yeah, for will. Michigan? No, I think the Bay Ten doesn't deserve to take credit for Michigan. They tried everything they could to ruin Michigan. So the Big Ten doesn't deserve Michigan. The Big Ten, in my opinion, is over in bowl games, except for Maryland. Maryland's the best team in the Big Ten right now. Hang on, Minnesota won their bowl game. Oh, Minnesota was in a bowl game? Minnesota Who'd won they play? Bowl uh, Bowling Green, maybe? <laughs> no. <laughs> A tough ball club out there, Bowling Green. <laughs> Bowling Green gave Michigan fits. <laughs> gave them fits. Let's see what we got here. 30 to 24. Northwestern over Utah. Okay. That's a big, that's a wild win. <laughs> Minnesota over Bowling Green. Rutgers over Miami. 
I'll tell you what now. How many? Hey, how, all right. Hey, at Big Ten West took care of business. At Big Ten West is taking care of business. How many Big Ten Except SEC matchups? Yeah, what was the outcome of all the Big Ten SEC matchups? Iowa, SEC. Uh, yeah, right well, here, starting Ole Miss beats Penn State. Um, Auburn beats, I mean, sorry, Maryland beats Auburn. LSU beats Wisconsin. Tennessee beats Iowa. And then, obviously, Michigan beats Auburn. So, two and three? By this, yeah, it'd be, yeah, two two. one game up. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, the Big Ten just... I, I, I just can't believe that they tried to do that in the middle of the season. That's crazy. Tried to do what? Suspend Harbaugh, no due process, the whole thing. And now we're seeing that Ohio State's hacking into catapults and all that. Yeah, zero integrity out in your guys' division. Yeah, we, we're about to be independent. I hope we're independent. I think that'd be a crazy, Wild. a crazy switch up. But... Yeah, I mean, ultimately, dude, people were trying to take you guys down because y'all cheated for several years. Shout out the kids, dude. Shout out the University of Michigan players. Just not get away when from everybody's that. when everybody's talking shit and everybody's like, <laughs> the mainstream media and Will Compton are all saying that they're a bunch of cheaters, and to go and still take care of business with all the adversity without your head coach on the field in your biggest games, that that says so much about the culture. Absolutely, that is insane to not like waver or get distracted. Like that is very, very rare to see a team stick together like that. And that is just cool. That's a national title team. They just seem like, a, they, they just seem like a team that like, literally I feel like they all go to the bar together. When I, when they I was, probably don't. they're probably like, Hey, we got one left. We ain't going to the bar together. I like that. I like that. You like the 2012 Michigan Wolverines. No, they are not <laughs> <laughs> them boys. Like, let's go to skis. Yeah. Win lose. We were still boozing. It was mostly losers. <laughs> it was tough out there. Are the, uh, the two white guys on the D line for Michigan. Yeah, Graham and that uh, McGregor. Can we get those guys on the all white team? <laughs> Salty cat. We got some. We hang well, on. Our, our D line is set. Well, we need depth. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we got depth. Like D line. We, we could use You're some. Uh, we some, use some guys on the inside. You know that uh, use some interior. That seventeen kid was the one that was messing with us at spring ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, the one who jumped in the fucking bush. He was a crazy. Yeah, kid. the crazy the motherfucker. Crazy one. I was fired up when he had that sack like the opening drive because. I want to say Bama might have scored them, but uh, had already scored them. But I thought they came out. They came out like putting it to that offensive line. Yeah, I I, I did not see that coming because they really didn't have that type of like the the success against offensive lines in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. I thought, man, it's gonna be tough to get pressure. There's some big boys over there at the Crimson Tide. They're they like are average, bigger than every NFL offensive line. Yeah, Herbie which, said that on the broadcast. Like, how slow are you if you're that big? How you up. feeling about the national title against Washington? I feel nervous. I do. It's crazy to me that Washington is one of those teams, too, that have played in so many games being underdogs, and they just continue to win. <laughs> they do, man. They just nah, fucking like, continue to cool win. It's too. nuts, bro. It's a fun story, and they're too. four-point underdogs again against Michigan. They were four-point underdogs against Texas. They were underdogs against Oregon twice. Like, it's just crazy. I think they were underdogs against uh, USC and maybe even Utah oh, like, at one point. Oregon, Oregon State, like, dude. That Penix kid they, is they a did, stud. They survived that the uh, Oregon State game, but yeah, 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 they survived the entire year. They, they, they just keep, they they just keep winning. They just they're they're not only surviving, they're thriving. And so, that kid watching that first half against Texas, because I thought Texas was going to run away with it. I thought Texas was going to win. It was going to be Texas and Michigan, but watching Penix, where he was putting the ball yeah, when there was beast. when he's there was beast. pressure, him just kind of moving to the side and handling his pocket presence and yeah. ripping it. Running when he had to run it, like just very elite football, elite football. When I was watching their offense, I was like, "Why couldn't we just operate on offense?" <laughs> like a they could score at any ball. moment. When yeah, he would have that QB, was close. man. Oh, no doubt. I'd have that QB I said for that game. Comes down to the quarterback. I it sucked that that last play had to be that play call. That's how. That's how much you like for which well, game? what. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was shit out of swaggy. Here. Yes. And he didn't even, like, get crazy, celebrate, like, start running the field at first. He's just like, do you fucking try that on me? <laughs> yeah. Like, crab Swatted the shit out of that ball. Imagine if he missed. <laughs> that was wild. But Washington, dude, their operation towards the end of the game was terrible. I was watching a little bit, like, the last two minutes of the game. They get their running back hurt, and they should have just took a knee. It would have been 12 seconds on the clock, 20 seconds on the clock, whatever it was. They decided to run it, 
and they get stopped. Then the running back's injured, so the, the clock has to stop. Yeah. Run and they almost lost. I tell you what, they they better strap up for the Michigan running game. Dude, they're I mean, it's a totally uh, it's a totally different game yeah, playing like Alabama. The just because Bama Michigan is just like a, a fun matchup to watch. Like built similar physical teams. Right. Um, going back and forth, like it felt like the Texas Washington game was a lot more like Washington's more finesse and everything this, else. So it'd be cool to kind of Washington see. Michigan game could be like a shootout. It could maybe be similar. Maybe yeah, different but if, outcome, you, if it's a knows, shootout, Michigan you got to give the edge to Washington. If it turns into a shootout, you would assume edge Washington because of the way they're able to put the ball where they are. Get it out fast. Michigan, the way Michigan wins is on the ground, taking their yeah. shots when they need them and playing incredible defense. Cause to think you're going to get the pressure on Penix, the way you did Alabama, it, it's they have they have the Joe Moore award winning offensive line. Like their offensive line is well put together, their tackles are well put together. They do a great job of communication. They handle the games that Texas was throwing at them. So, I don't. This would be more a question for you. I don't know if it's like, hey, you keep a similar game plan of like, hey, we're we're rushing five, we're bringing a fifth guy every time, or you put in four and hoping your games kind of work out and then get guys in the back end to cover up. Yeah, I don't like if you're like Michigan to me. They just did a good job kind of being like, hey, we're going to apply pressure like when you feel like it's situational. Uh, Penix is a lot better than Milrow. Milrow, you know you can fluster as long as you get it, as long as you get in his face and get pressure on him. Mm -hmm. Penix, you might have to have more guys in coverage and let your you let your four go hunt. Because the four that's going to hunt now, like they're 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 good ball players. Good ball players, and they have a great rotation keeping guys fresh. Yeah, and it's not like anybody gets real stagnant. Like you see pressure coming up the middle, you see pressure coming from inside, outside, all of it. So yeah. I think they're going to have to do a good job of uh, uh, getting home with four to keep as many as they can in coverage. I agree. Because if not, Penix will, I think. Well, they played, yeah, Michigan be played a zone. I mean, may, maybe I'm wrong. They played zone in the back end and then let guys go eat. I don't know if you can do the zone against Penix because those receivers will sit down with him getting rid of it that fast. Yeah, I mean, it'll be, it'll just be a lot different. Like, the game plan is going to be so much different. Like, you saw with Alabama, like, they sent so much pressure to the side of the back. Like, you, you, you can dictate pressure going to the tight end, to the open side, to the back, away from the back, to the passing strength, to the weak side. Like, with uh, Michigan, they're doing a lot of it to the back side just because all that zone read game. That's why, that's why there are so many negative plays. Like, Milrow, if he keeps it, he's getting hit because you got, a, you got somebody coming off the edge or he doesn't do a good job of getting it out to the perimeter once he sees that edge rusher coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you have that, if you have like that, ground. if you have like that run pass option to where it's zone read and you're reading the end, but you also have the option to throw it out wide, the minute you see that edge guy coming off the edge, you would hit that receiver. He was uh, slow a couple times getting it out. Like, one, uh, not the uh, number three, got rocked one play. Yeah, because he got it out to him late off that cat blitz, that random screen, that, and that was a great play by the defense too. Yeah, that's absolutely. Down, breaking good down, timing, good like, Yeah, they, they had really good, and that's another thing too. Uh, the back end of Michigan did a great job open field tackling. Like there'd be wide, except for that first one where they, yeah, except for that first yeah, that one, that thing was came nuts. Out. But you know, you, you get back in it, you could easily fall into the tank there. But they did a good job, like making plays in the open field against like guys like, that are on Alabama. Yeah, I like. That was a crazy move. The only better move I've seen was the LSU Florida game when that kid blew his knee out. Jeez. Oh <laughs> yeah, we saw that. That really move was crazy. nuts, and then it ended up, you know, happened the way it happened. But my God, the, you feel yeah. better. You feel better about Washington than than Bama. You have to, right? Yeah, you got to feel like a massive monkey's off your back because you beat the SEC row, uh, Bama squad. You couldn't get out of the first round of the playoffs. You finally get out of the first round of the playoffs against Bama in the SEC. So. Mm -hmm. it's, I feel like you're kind of playing with house of money. No. I know you want the natty yeah, for you sure. Want, but dude, you want the natty. It's, it was hard. To yeah. me, this yeah. with that. based on all the allegations, everything you just said it everything correct. Like I I do feel uh, this massive sigh of relief being able to walk in here and essentially just be like, you got I mean, you guys all did bet against it. And I get it. I under, I completely understand why. But it just it's a nice feeling to be able to walk in and feel that type of way. But with all the allegations, all the stuff with hardball and stuff like that, the only way this movie ends as a blockbuster hit is with Michigan winning the national championship. <laughs> that's the only, that's the only way because all the, the, and I know you said it's objective of, of the, uh, whether it's tainted or not. Subjective. Subjective, whatever. To me, it's like when you win, when you win this game, there's just, 
no one can say anything. You can try, but you really can't say a fucking thing. No matter what, you guys will be in the history books as the national as the national champions. It'll no matter just, what, exactly. Just be a, a a faded. There'll be an asterisk in there. With something That's with right. A lot people, of people people will bring, haters will bring that up, but you can also say all these allegations came up in the middle of the season. These players had every reason to, to cash it in, not stick together, have the excuses. Like Florida and, State. And they a little like Florida State. My, we'll get to them. My there. God. Got to throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> that, talk about a bad culture. <laughs> That's <is> bad. <laughs> but they had every opportunity to do that and fold. And they literally just took on the persona of their head coach, not really answering the media questions. Yeah. Like, no, just, no, no. These guys, these guys, look at this guy. And don't look at me. Look at this guy. Look at that guy. Like, that's like, you know what it's like to be in a locker yeah, room. No, no question. Like, legitimately. Great culture. Insane culture, yes, bro. Legitimately, both things can be true. You know what I mean? Like, it's yes. it's not like the players are all you guys cheated. It's, there's a lot of stuff going on outside the locker room that's it, everybody's trying to investigate, do this and that. Like, all that stuff can be true while this team is has built the culture that it has to kind of, like, go against all that all year long because it was Michigan versus everybody. Mm. I think even in that game as it was unfolding, it's kind of, I know for me, it was like, it was harder to root against Michigan because of the cats like Blake and yeah. And all those guys that are like staying poised and going. Cause we sat with Blake and listened to him and it's like, now they're in the national title. But if you look back on when we were sitting down with them, like you could legit be like, yo, that it's like a, a national, that's a national title running back mindset right there. Yeah. So it's just kind of like cool to see. And then he got the touch on everything else. And I was like, fuck, but it, you know, it's, yeah, it's like hats off to Michigan. They've been they've been dealing with the shit all year long. And Trevor, uh, not Trevor King, Zach Zinter being out too. Yeah, him just standing yes, there, tight best, jersey on lineman. that belly, and your they're missing him, and they handle it because that was my biggest worry going into it. Is like you're missing essentially your leader, one yeah. of the best players on your team, projected first round pick, and they went and fucking handled it, dude. I, that's the thing that fires me up the most is the culture of the team. It's so cool that they're not blaming anybody. They're focused. They're they're giving praise to other people, and Harbaugh is the perfect villain for like this whole scenario. You, yeah, I know, but you almost enjoy watching. Like I love when the camera's on, when all the big plays were happening, because you see like he's in the moment, like, yo, we are in a war. Yeah. And a lot plays got to kind of just go your way. Like you have the, the muff punt, the pick, but then it goes back the other way, but you're seeing your guys get home on, on sat, like on pressures, getting sacks, making those plays in the open field. And you just slowly see him smiling and fist pumping. Like, there's a lot of ball left, but fuck, we are taking care of business yes. for that play. Yeah. Which is like fun to watch. Truly present in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I, that just, that fires me up, dude. No body. That was awesome. And then the, the video, if you see his dad. <clears throat> yeah. That yeah. shit was so funny, bro. Our ball senior. <clears throat> you want to hit this ab? Should we talk about the fit bod? Talk about the fit bod. The essential, what, what is it? The essential your workout really needs. Okay, here we go. This episode is brought to you by FitBod. This is what your workout needs. It's a fitness app that creates completely personalized workouts that adapt as you improve. Whether you are a seasoned gym goer or just starting your fitness journey, FitBod will push you to make progress. It's like having your own personal trainer. Think JP Hovey on Push Up Tuesday, but better. It's cheaper. You can work out anywhere or with or without any equipment. I didn't see it going that way, JP. I'll get you back in here in a second. And it's easy to build a custom fitness plan that works for you. Again, New Year's resolutions. Everybody has goals. Matter of fact, JP Ovey is going to be on the Bustin' with the Boys Instagram every Tuesday running Push-Up Tuesday. Bustin' Instagram or his own personal Instagram. He's also got a Push-Up Challenge that I believe did you put out to the world. Yeah, that he put out to the world. Week one, week two. You can follow the boy. He can be your personal trainer while you wear the FitBot. FitBot creates a personalized workout routine based on your goals. FitBot tracks your muscle recovery so you can avoid burnout and keep up your momentum. It also adapts as you improve. So each workout will be challenging and push you to make progress. Add FitBot to your workout essentials. Join FitBot today uh, to get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at FitBot fitbod.me forward slash bussin that's f-i-t-b-o-d dot m-e slash bussin now we are back interesting interesting ad read you get a per you get a personal trainer on the app and a personal trainer on tuesdays at 8 p.m <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah well like promoting jp that as a personal nice. trainer but yeah. better fitbod Fit got half of an yeah. ad there <laughs> yeah dude yeah but going back to uh michigan and washington it's a completely different game now. 
Yeah. Like play, you're playing a completely different personnel, a better quarterback, a good offensive line, receivers that have the confidence to go get it done, a team that also has been counted out multiple times this year to lose. Mm-hmm. And you're going against like two teams that essentially, in one way or another, have been it on. Play, college football playoff got it right. Like, got it right. right. Like, two great games. The two undefeated teams, the one and two seed, are playing for the national title. Like, you couldn't have, you couldn't have put it together any better than that. Let me ask you this, devil's advocate, Georgia. No, I mean, yeah, Georgia mopped the floor with fucking Florida State. And Florida State fans were so pissed. And they're right. I didn't know that they had a billion people opt out, get injured, all that stuff. I just saw the score. I saw the 63 to 3. And I'm just thinking, holy fuck. They got their asses mopped. But given all the opt-outs, all the injuries, everything else, suing this, that, the other, like, at the end of the day, the cards that were dealt to you were dealt to you. You either got to accept that shit, strap up, and get ready to go play, give the middle finger to everybody, because you were playing against a great team like Georgia. Like, it's, it wasn't like you were going, uh, who, who, who's another team that had, like, an easy game where it's like, oh, they didn't belong in this bowl game? Uh, One of the better Oregon, ones. Oregon Liberty. Fiesta Oregon bowl. Liberty. It wasn't like you're playing Liberty. No disrespect to you, Liberty. It's just, yeah, 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 it is what it season. is. But you got to still play against a true contender. And that's a game that you still get up for, whether or not the backups are in, whatever the case may be. You got to play against Georgia. the uh, One of the best teams in the past five years, maybe arguably the best team in the past five years, and mm-hmm. in the Georgia Bulldogs. And you, you just, you pack it in and you bitch and you complain and you do this and it's not fair and blah, blah, blah. All that can be true, but no matter what, you could still have the opportunity to strap up and play a New Year's Day bowl. That game, and you shit the bed. That game was over bef- when it got announced. Because the Florida State was so focused on getting away from the ACC and filing lawsuits and we're crying woe is so We're me. not. We're, yeah, I'm opting like, out. At the end of the day, we know the structure of college football has changed. However, it's still a gladiator's game. It's still a best on best. There's still pride and ego and fight involved in every single game. And if you are going to treat the game of football like that, you deserve to get your ass blown out 63-3. to three. You yeah. guys want to opt out, get ready for the, the NFL draft? That is, that's, that's great. Go ahead and do that. But it just seemed like Florida State didn't give a fuck. And my question, too, is like, and I don't know this answer, but you would assume Georgia probably has a lot of guys on that roster who could opt out or not play in the think, game. I think Brock Bowers was out. I think their best but wide receiver was out. I think he was, was kind out. of dinged up. And Brock is somebody like, if you're a prime time NFL guy, like th- that's where those decisions should get made. But you're mid later round, like, and you're opting out of bowls the X, Y, and Z. That's where it's, that's where it gets softer for that, me. That's taking the easy road out, right? And not accepting the challenge. If you're a third, fourth, fifth, what second, third, fourth, if you're not in the first round, like, obviously, one hundred percent, you're gonna go to New York and you're gonna get drafted sitting there in the green room. That bowl game is an opportunity to go against different and probably better talent than you have. Absolutely. And you need to answer the bell. Because the, the, because the reason why you're opting out is you're happy with your, your body of work, but you're scared about taking on a new challenge and hurting your draft stock as opposed to, I'm going to body these guys. The risk of injury. Show. Yeah, the risk of injury is there, there too. There's stuff out there like the Ole Miss quarterback when he right. tore his Jake shit. Butt. There, yeah, there, there are several stories, but to your point, like if you're not getting, because I want to say they give out more first round grades than who, the guys who get drafted, right? Like they say do, it's 50 first round grades and only, you know, 30 are going to get drafted. Junior, my junior year when I put in my draft thing, they told me like, hey, we don't know what it's going to say, but these are usually very conservative. So you're not, it's going to look worse than it is. Got you. Type of thing. But if you are like, if you're a mid round cat and you're opting out, like you do get the op to play against again, Georgia to put on film, like against NFL mm-hmm. caliber players. Cause you're training for the combine an extra few weeks of training for the combine. Isn't going to do dick, bro. No, like, the combine sounds great. It's fantasy football. Like, it sounds great. Like, we were all brainwashed for pro day for the X, Y, Z. But the minute the combine and the pro days are over, it doesn't matter anymore. And the, and the uh, pro day combine stuff is like 20% of the full picture. Like, you're basically leaning on your tape from college and everything else. Then you want to match the tape to, hey, how do they test? What is their, what's their discipline like? Let's, get, let's talk to their references, their coaches, everybody around them to get to know them. But people who are thinking that you got to train the extra, like, I got to go, I got to get a leg up. Like, I'm, I promise you, that d- does not matter in the end. I agree with most of that, but I, I think the percentage is a little high, even for 20% being the combine. I, the combine to me is, you're right, the film is what's going to get you drafted. The combine is nothing more than just checking boxes. Hey, is he fast enough? Yes or saying, no? Are you saying the combine's lower percent? 
It's a lower percent. Okay, I I, I'm, I'm on board with that. I yeah, thought yeah. you were about to say it was more. No, no, I'm no. I'm thinking, bro, you were dogging, dudes. Like, you you run fast, you show up, you do all the things right. Then, that, yeah, like, yeah. You, like you're saying right now, you, just yeah, checking you the box. You need to go and check boxes. Now, if you're an outstanding athlete and you're able to exceed that, it's going to help you. But at the end of the day, it's like, offensive line, you get more than 25 reps on bench. Yes, check the box. Everything after that, he's strong enough. You're 40. What's your 10? Is he fast enough or is he slow as shit? Okay, check the box. Didn't check the box. See the speed. But the most important thing in the combine is not even on the field. It's in the meeting rooms, how your mind is processing a high-pressure situation with these coaches, these GMs, things you thought about since you were a little kid, getting all nervous as you're sitting in front of a, you know, Mike Vrabel and these other these other NFL coaches you've been watching since you were a kid. Mm -hmm. And if you're a lower-round cat and say you opt out to do all that stuff and you happen to go to the combine, I can see a question these days being like, why would you opt out for the bowl game? Yeah. Against a team like, you know, I'm using Florida State as the example, but against a team like Georgia. Right. And how that gets handled is probably a, a look into the cookie jar. Because if you don't, if say you don't bench 25, then you're going to be talking to the strength coach. You're going to be talking to the coaches, why this, that. Yeah. Then you, it might be justified why he doesn't get 25. Like he still plays with, he mm -hmm. plays with tremendous leverage, X, Y, and Z. Same with the 40, all that type of stuff. You can tell on tape, like if that is, if he's faster than what he just showed at the combine or if he kind of outperformed or surprised you a little bit more. The, uh, the bench press too is kind of a, a facade because you, how many times have you been in the locker room in Lincoln, Nebraska, and you see some guys that look like Tarzan are strong as shit, but you, they don't, doesn't translate on the field. Like the, uh, the guard for the Bengals. Somebody told me this. I didn't even, I don't even know if this is a real uh, thing or not, but Kappa, I believe his name is the kid that was saying F you Nashville when he was walking off the field a couple years ago, he got like below 20, like a really bad bench press. He's mm. playing the league and he's handled himself at a, at a relatively good level for a long time. So these things that correlate, it's like you're checking boxes and what are your mentals like? That is, that's all the combine is. It is not as big of a deal as you think it is. You look at the mainstream, you look at the NFL networks and they're putting up the biggest, you know, job interview of your life. Yeah, it's a job interview and it's, it's big, but it is the most important thing at the at moment. The moment. Time, but, but as soon as that, as soon as you finish, you take your cleats off after you're doing with everything, it no longer matters. And you get another opportunity to say your 40 didn't go the way you want. You got a pro day coming up to go get that done. Mm -hmm. I think the agents are to blame for a lot of that. They are. Because it's all for those low round guys. They don't have the as highly touted agents. And you know, they're sitting there telling them, hey, don't get hurt. This is where you're going to go. And just lying to them because they know they're going to get paid. They know it's one on one at that point. And they can infiltrate their mind thinking like this right. is not. Look, it's all about getting you to. Pro day combine, do you think by one game you're going to elevate your stock that much? If the answer is no, like, hey, you really need to do what's in the best interest of you and only you. You've, you've, the last four or five years, you've, uh, you've sacrificed for the brand, for the logo and everything else. You've done your stuff. You're not playing for the national title game. Like, you have to think now you are a business going into the NFL. Is it worth yada, yada, X, Y, and Z? And that's how, you know, I would assume these agents kind of infiltrate their mind for a second. Well, you hope that that kind of ends now that we go to 12 team playoffs. You, you would hope that that. Yeah, but then you see 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. That, there's always going to be a line, that gray area of who didn't get in, and then you're going to run into Florida States. They were, uh, I don't know if you listened to it yesterday morning, but on college game day, they were kind of talking about how the shift is going to go and Kirk Kirk Street as a, uh, he's like pro bowl, like he wants bowl games, but he's like, hey, listen, if guys are opting out and they don't want to do it, then just do away with the bowl games. Like just focus on the playoff because you're still going to get, Bowl games from there, I know there's a lot of big business that goes into it, but it is. It's kind of like, you know, what – basically, if you're not in the playoff, they're just, like, glorified exhibition games. Yeah. Right. Well, That's you see what it's turned into because when we played, it was like, you're in the Gator Bowl. You know, you're not fighting for anything special. Right. But you're out there fighting because you're like, we got to end the season on a high note. And there's all these, like, justifiable things in your mind telling you, I got to fucking – Go after it. Yeah, because if, if you're an underclassman or you still got another year, you are trying to, you're still trying to establish yourself. Say you ended on a bad note toward the end of the year, you get to kind of right. get back out there. Well, I think those bowl games before the college football playoff had so much history to them too. So you were like, see guys win the Gator Bowl and you're like, oh, we're going to, like, we got to win the Gator Bowl. It was just cooler, you know, with the bowl games. But did you see what Kirby Smart said about, or after the Florida State game, yes. about, Everyone needed to see what happened. Like, this is why it's important to play because that's just unfair for those guys that went out there and had to do that. Yeah, he made an incredible point. I would love to hear what his pitch was to all the guys where everybody's basically opting in to play. So many guys are playing. You know what I mean? Culture. Yeah, exactly. And not mm -hmm. saying that, uh, who is it, Coach Norv? Norvell. Norvell. 
not saying that he's not like a great culture guy, but I'm telling you, man, they just, they, you know, it just, they had too it's much snowballed going on. for them to just point the finger everywhere else. And I get it. I'd be pissed too. But the way this college football playoff played out, like they got it right. They got it right. Yeah. Florida state wouldn't have stood a chance versus any of the, any of those teams that were in the playoff. No, they, they wouldn't have. But this Florida state example is a great example of Michigan. Because you see all the adversity, you see all the stuff, and then the culture difference, seeing Michigan versus the Florida State stuff, they folded. They fold in this situation, and it, you obviously see the, the repercussions for all that versus Georgia, as opposed to Michigan, who didn't let the, the noise get in their ears. And that's, that's a lot about the coaching. Uh, but that's a good point. That's a fair point. You guys cheated. Right. <laughs> if we win the national championship, that's just like a, a ding right off the shoulder. That has nothing. I, I am fired the fuck up for this game, dude. No, you be should awesome. be. The Michigan squad, like, yeah, they're, they're, good. Go? they're a great ball club. Yeah, I think I am going to go. I think so. You have you to, should, right? I know, but they, I'm, in my mind, it's like, okay, Mondays we film. Can I get I back in time to do slips and picks on Tuesday? Houston's but in this situation, I might have to give you guys the bird and dip. Huh? I mean, the, uh, Houston's closer now. Yeah, but they, you, they, can, they, you could drive back. You really about it. You can, Eight you can drive now and drive back. I might have to do that. But I think, yeah, Dave and I were texting about last night. I think we're going to go. You're, um, a, uh, you're a road dog. I am a road dog. Come get, on I now. You're a road dog. Wheel. I can get behind the wheel now. Dave can <laughs> drop you that. off in the PJ. I, that would be nice. That would be Dave, nice. That would Dave be very that. nice of Dave. Of, hey, he just he win. Come on. And I, did he, did he, I didn't see his Twitter, but did he take the money he won from the Michigan game and put it on Washington? I don't think he put it on Washington. Bro, could you imagine? Wow. Wait, what? He was talking remember, about, oh, he took dinner. the money he won and then put it on Washington to win last he night? He said that he Same would one. bet on Washington, but I don't think he did. Damn. You know that means he bet something on Washington. Yeah, he bet something, but it had to be. Yo, million dollar bet hitting. Oh, my God. I can't imagine. I was, you know, I was sitting there in my little man cave last night, sweating bullets, legs shaking, like just truly immersed in the game. And like two or three times I just thought, I cannot imagine what Dave is going through right now. The question is, can he do it again? The question is, Dave Portnoy, can you do it again? Double the bet. <laughs> the, uh, you're welcome, fat boy. <laughs> to be, I shot him a text and said, hey, congratulations. Dave just responds, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was an insane, insane game. It was... It gives you a lot of hope, too, because you see the firepower of Washington, but then all the mistakes Michigan made, it's like, you clean them boys up, dude. We're... You play a clean football game. Just a well. Everyone does the scheme right. <laughs> we run the ball efficiently. Bro, yeah. We take yeah. our shots when we need to. Yeah. Handle the time of possession. You will be national champions. Play perfect, you win. <laughs> Hell yes. I'm already nervous, man. Another great, another great uh, notch for this one, saying that you guys are going to win this game, is like, the whole schedule mess all year long too. Like I think Garrett was saying it. Somebody said it back there. Like they'll have to play it. They'll have to do it back to back next the next week. Play good teams, great teams, back to back. So I think that also helps with that narrative all year long that was getting fall. Like you guys have the easiest schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's anything you kind of feel like. Oh shit, we gotta we gotta we got another one next week. Let's get back up because it's almost yeah. like this entire month you're preparing for the SEC. Yeah. Well, yes. And two, game goes into overtime. Much more physical game. <whistles> now you got to get on a plane, go back. Thank God for Herb, their strength coach. Yeah. He's going to get them right. I don't even know if Michigan has classes. Boys, do not go to one class if you do. <laughs> I'm we sure are their not, teacher, if their teachers they are worth the shit, off. they'll be on board for this. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. Let's they'll email the and say, so-and-so yeah. does not have to come today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Can you fucking? Should we talk ball? Should we talk football? Should we hit it? Should we hit an average? Blue, we're taking home a natty. Or if we want to do the optimum one, we want to do the resolutions later. Sure. What are we talking about? Blue Nile is what we're talking about. You want to give it a go? Uh, Blue Nile, dude. Yeah, let me throw that in there. All right. Everyone's talking about how 2024 is going to be their year, but if you're thinking about getting engaged this year, <gasps> this really could be the year that changes everything, especially AP. if you shop for your engagement ring at BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com is the original online jeweler. Since 1999, they've helped millions of couples create their perfect engagement ring. Blue, uh, with Blue Nile, you can create a bigger, more brilliant piece, 
than you can even imagine, dude, at a mm. price you won't find at a traditional jeweler. They are committed to ensuring the highest ethical standards are observed when sourcing diamonds and jewelry. Blue Nile also offers a diamond price guarantee, which means they can usually meet or beat a competitor's price on a comparable diamond, dude. I'm sure, JP, you use Blue Nile when you're going through the process, getting engaged. We're very excited. You, I'm so excited to do your wedding as the officiant. It's going to be a hell of a time. Uh, when you make a lifelong commitment, so does Blue Nile. Ooh. You get guaranteed service and repair for life. Listen to me. We all live a long time. You get repair and service forever. Right now, you guaranteed. get guaranteed. Right now, you can get $50 off your purchase of $500 or more with code BUSSIN at BlueNile.com. That's $50 off with code BUSSIN, B-U-S-S-I-N, at BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com. Back to the show. I got to pee. <laughs> T.O., time out. Time, time, time. The loser of our league has to take a blow-up doll on a date and Instagram live it. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have a blow-up doll sitting in the booth across. Are you in it? I'm in the league, but I didn't lose. Thank yeah, I know you're God. <laughs> I'm in the league. Shits and giggles. Hey, shout out to Shits and Giggles Fantasy Football League. I thought that's what he was saying. It was me and ours. I was like, what? This is <laughs> Between me and JP. Dude, I would love to hear if, if anybody, everybody who has, who's in a fantasy football league, if you have a loser, if you have a, if, not reward, but loser punishment that you have to do, leave it. Leave it in the comments so that way we can look at punishments to have for like or, next or year. Tag us. And if there's like yeah, or videos. tag us. Get on social and tag us. We are just talking about fantasy football. How you're in the uh, two week, you're in a two week uh, fight. With Clump. Oh, Clump is, he's, he's got the team to beat. Clump's a GM. He's a hell of a GM. Okay. Clump's a hell of a GM. I somehow got the edge on him. I'm up eight points going into the week two. Which is a good thing because they were just saying that because McCaffrey's down. Oh, for real? Yeah, he's got McCaffrey. Yes. No, this, it's, this oh, is it's a weird that week. Was, they, they weren't going to play him. They're going to you rest him up for the first round. It's, that, that's, that's, that's big. Yeah. That's big. We need that. Um, Our bet, Garrett. You're gonna go to the grocery store and film yourself doing all that oh, stuff? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. shit. I don't know. I was thinking, I gotta find the video. But yeah, well, I was thinking about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, JP's got it all set up. I last night was watching that Texas Washington game. Like, I'm about to look like such an idiot, but it'll actually be hilarious. It'll be funny. It'd be funny if there was like also like someone went with you to film you filming yourself. We can do it on one of the stops. But, that shit would be yeah it'll be it'll be funny i actually am kind of looking forward to it that's good i'm glad you're finding i'm gonna try and make it like as hype as possible exact... do you do you got any uh michigan merch ideas oh yeah i was gonna bring that. I was thinking last night chance. like yeah but to drop right now like blue or like roses are blue or something like that like they, do blue they, roses i think bars already oh really you know, no. Dave's we gotta do get a better that. job of. And I was really getting ready, like, yeah. The elevator, well, some they, shit. If we do, <laughs> maybe I even saw it too. You know how it can like marketing can sub can subconsciously get in your brain. Yeah. Well, if you we have, an idea yeah, those like are hard. That, they usually just give it up to Barstool. But see, those aren't blue rope. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I, ain't got nothing to say. I don't like the helmet on that either. You like, go what are blue we doing? roses. That's what I'm saying. May shirt, blue roses. Been, it should have just been a maize. Yeah, yeah. It should have just been a maize shirt with a rose on Y'all it. Y'all feeling me? Yeah. Just when they in small, just like the score like of the game or something or like that. Something. But yeah, yeah, we should. We gotta think of something for. Yeah, we gotta. We'll we'll, we'll do a little think tank after the show. Yes, yeah, some merch would be nice. Yeah, some real nice. That's some real nice. Um, how do we feel? Go back. That's oh, crazy. That's wild. Oh, that's crazy. I, I was sitting there about to be. Oh, nice. I don't see the boy in there. That's just, I just uh, think that's the shop now. Interesting. I go back again. Oh, oh okay. interesting. I'll have to call somebody at Barstow. There we are. Just that's that better. old. Just that old photo. We need yeah. to see what's out there. Yeah. It's like the photo they use, I think, on the uh, Manning cast. Uh, no, Will was actually trying to get the Manning cast photo changed, and he like takes me aside. He's like, "Hey, you cool with that photo?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. We're good." 
I don't care. I just when I see the old photo, photos of Taylor, I just think like we got to get this shit. We yeah. got to get something over time, new in the game. Over time, we'll get it. Yeah. We'll get it. Hey, your Instagram. You you were posting. I forget what. I was probably the first like quarter of first half year you did on Instagram. And it's the one where both your arms up are over. Oh, yes. <laughs> so you're just at, oh a thicker boy, man. <laughs> Which is crazy because you weren't that thick then. Like you weren't like. And I was like 280 then, 290 maybe. Like down 20 from my regular weight. There's nothing worse than having to be the person who's got yeah. both arms up. Scrunching everything up, dude. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> yeah. trying to take a photo like this. I know. I literally found all those photos and I wanted to put them all in there. And I was like, I'll just do like quarter, like quarterly posts. Mm -hmm. And I finished and Taylor goes, why don't you just make a video? And they just slide over. And I was like, come on, Tay. You know, I don't think about that kind of stuff. Either way, either yours, way I was like, you oh, got the... Your video was nice. How long did that video take you to make? Oh, a minute. Did it? Yeah. Man. It took me a nice minute. Probably Rue's entire nap. Oh, for real? Yeah. How long does that nap usually take? Hour and a half? Two hours. Yeah, like a two hour nap. But like, because you have to go through, I mean, I do it in a bad way. I need to like add stuff to a folder like as I go. But I was, I like scrolled through videos of 2023. And then I took like 140 and moved them into a folder. And then from there, I just picked the ones that matched the song. Yeah. Yeah, I was banged up. Uh. Whatever night it was, vitamins up, 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 lifted. <laughs> and there. I was uh, listening to uh, Green Day. Yeah. Good riddance. And listen to all Good the damn. old school alternative rock jams from the 2000s. Mm. And I was just, Wait, I was just in the zone thinking of my boys from back in the day. I messaging them all, texting them all. Was that the night uh, of the party? I can't remember. Oh, we, yeah, we got to talk about that party? party. The murder mystery party you put on. Yeah. Dog. Will surprise his wife, Charo, with a murder mystery party. Actors, the whole thing. Like, we show up. These actors are, like, fully bought in. Miss, like, this guy's name is, like, Mr. D or something like that. And he's got another chick with him. And Will literally planned the entire thing to where Charo's friends flew in and then hid in the corner. And then we're sitting there, like, what do we do? We're like, oh, we'll go in the back. And then they show up. It'll be, like, an empty room. And the guy's going to show them around. So Charo gets all excited. She's happy to see everybody. We get like around to start talking about the game, and he's like, "Let me bring out my assistants, uh, more actors, blah blah blah." First one walks out. Charles sees her friend, like literally get, goes into tears. She's so excited. Next person walk out, another shrilling screech, and the whole time you just feel the boy's energy. Like I really fucking pulled this thing yeah. off. I was about to tear up seeing her reaction to uh, Susan. Susan walked out like, "Let me introduce my actors," like Taylor saying, and then she dropped it down like this, and she just erupted like, "Oh Dude. my gosh!" And we go Start through. Crying. We go through this. No, I'm trying to paint the picture for you. You should definitely be the one to tell the story. But like all her friends came dinner. There was like chefs in the back. Everyone gets a name tag. If you had a name tag, you're a suspect. And the two other actors were also suspects. You get these like folders to write down information and like every like scene or every act, essentially you flip a page to learn more about your character and kind of take you where you want to go. There's money to bribe people with. They have yeah. to answer the question. If you give them a dollar, it is a sick, sick process. It is a murder mystery Look, Taylor did a great job right there. I would love to take all the credit in the world. Like, did I vision the whole thing? Sure. But, dude, there were so many. Like, Charles' friends were helpful. Like, our nanny was super helpful. She, like, booked the company. She, like, found, like, two to three different ones. And I was like, just figure out which one that you would that you would do if you did a murder mystery party. Who, who was it? Who was the murderer? Well, do you want to... What happened was is... I mean, so... It's like a spoiler that we're going to... No. I... Well, hold on. Before you say it, explain, like kind of the game a little bit okay you want to see the season finale <laughs> um but i'm throwing a lot of flowers to charles friends like they basically helped me out like i basically thought of the painting they filled in all of it they did everything they're like hey did you think about child care for this day hey so on friday what do you think we're going to do because i was going out to the arizona bowl so it was fly her friends in and then when she'd see them all charles was trying to plan stuff for the weekend i was like i'll just leave them open i gotta i got something in the works for you like you can go do this but make sure you're free during this time to make it to not give it away. But basically, once her friends were there, they stayed until Sunday. So they stayed all weekend. They had the Airbnb, got an Airbnb for them, like the whole night. And so when we when we go to the murder mystery party, I have a dinner reservation planned for us. I'm like, hey, I'm taking you to a, a dinner spot of one we haven't been to before. And then after that, like, let's go get a couple drinks. I got childcare for us. Like, let's go get a couple drinks at, at a speakeasy and just kind of lean into it and just kind of role play a little bit, like, you know, get a little spicy. Um, so she like wore, she like wore a dress and I wore like a collared shirt and a, uh, a tie just for the foundational stuff to get to the house, drive to the Airbnb, pull up, 
then I take out 1920s accessories. Like I put on the the uh, suspenders. suspenders that I had on out there, my newsboy hat, give her accessories like pearl necklace, scarf, stuff like that. We walk in and all the surprise stuff happens. So when the murder mystery starts, he basically sets up as Taylor was saying, we all get binders, but we c any of us could be the killer. We don't know who the killer is. Not even the killer knows who they are. You're basically playing an entire game of Clue and then you try and figure it out at the end. So then like Taylor got it right. Charles was the killer. Charles Char and her team, we split up into teams of three. They randomized it too. So people that didn't know each other were playing together. It just, it was really cool because it, it's like you're forced to talk to and communicate with everybody. Like it is a, a murder mystery party is a perfect, like adult style. Icebreaker. Night. Yeah. 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 Getting different groups around each other. Probably be like werewolf. Like you're playing with a big group. People don't really know each other. You just get acclimated. And then like, if I go up to Taylor, I'm like, Hey, you know, what business did you have with so-and-so with, uh, with, with Ivan stoned? Mm. And Taylor be like, you know, hold out his hand because you got to work to get questions answered and have money because you can run out of money. Uh, but you're working all these different acts. Then you eat in the middle. You try and put stuff together. Another murder happens in the middle of the investigation, which switches it up. And as Taylor was saying, each act, you learn another clue about yourself and the goal of like what you're trying to keep secret, but you have dirt on somebody else. And you're trying to pry it out of everybody. And then at the end, everyone kind of says who they think the murderer is. And again, it could be you. So you're basically just trying to, you're playing a massive real life game of Clue. It's awesome. And I, the icebreaker part was my favorite because when everyone's kind of getting there, it's like Charles' friends, Will and Charles' friends. And then it was like me, Donnie, Caleb, and Taylor. Like everyone was kind of our neighbors. Yeah, even yeah, our neighbors. neighbors yeah. Yeah, they're in there because so, Caleb and them come in and they yeah. don't really know everybody. So everyone's kind of clicked up like a high school. But the minute you start counting people off, you count people off by six. There's 18 people. So six teams of three. We are now like all kind of mixed hodgepodge to where like, we now have to work together as a team and learn about each other. And then you go to talk to other people. It's where it's not like a, you're hanging out with just the people you know. Like, you're getting to know everybody in a very unique setting. I thought it was cool how the killer didn't know that they were the killer. Yeah. Because we both walked into it thinking, we hope we're not the killer. I know. That way we can work together. Already trying to game it up. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We trying to get there. the thing going. It was, dude, it was so much fun. So much fun. And then after, the reason why this whole story got brought up is we got a little banged up, hit the vitamins right after. And Will... I got banged up two nights in a row. <laughs> Did you? So I'm talking. No, no, not two nights in a row. I'm thinking of New Year's Eve, but yes. God, yeah. Yeah. So we finished and the, it, it was great. Like it really was great, but there were like multiple holes. Oh, so, 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 it's easy. Yeah. There were multiple holes <laughs> in the, like the, the game. Like a lot of stuff kind of didn't add up. You kind of had to fill in the pieces for yourself. Cause like the papers didn't give you that or whatever. And, uh, Will's a little banged up and he starts being constructively critical <laughs> about the actors. He thinks they left, but he's standing right behind him. Like, he's just like, yeah, next time we got to get guys that are going to probably buy. And we got we to gotta vet the company to make sure they buy in a little bit more. I thought so. And he's standing right there. And he's like, hope you guys had fun. Here's my business card if you want to do it again. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> no, but they did, they did good. They, they did, good. did a really good job of being their characters and everything else. It got confusing a couple of times because people are asking questions saying like, you said this earlier. And the gal was like, oh, no, I didn't say it that way. I said it this way. So there was just some holes because it felt a little, not rushed, but when when they, when they we were sitting down to have dinner and they're like, hey, are we ready to solve the murder? I'm thinking like, yo, I, you almost disregard the food because you're still wanting to walk around and talk to everybody and get some more out of it. But it almost felt like it was a little too condensed. Yeah. It could have been another hour. Yeah. Because right when we walked in, like when we pulled up to the Airbnb, Charles was like, so, so what do you have planned? And I was like, oh, we, we got I got us a private dinner with a private chef. And then when he opens the door, dude is in full character talking to Charlie, like, welcome to the murder mystery. I was like, oh, I kind of wish you would have said that, but yeah, let's go on in. They walk to the back room, see our local friends, and then it, it could not have went any better. It, it was, was all awesome. time. It was awesome. We dude. should we should just have one. Yeah. Get the call. Yeah, get the gals in, get some friends, like uh, do a big one. He said ideally, like he likes to do where it's teams of four. But it's a lot of fun. Like again, you have somebody who's controlling the binder. We had somebody who's taking notes with the binder. We had somebody controlling the cr controlling the cash, like being the treasurer, and then somebody who would like do the lead role of walking around, talking, like doing the negotiate or mm. trying to negotiate or get some get some facts out. But it's it a lot good. of fun. I highly recommend murder mystery parties. And also to give flowers, Will Compton was voted best actor, and Taylor was voted best actress. A long way. It was nice. Long it was way. nice. Long way. It was, dude, it was a lot of fun. And it, it like the game within the game, like, uh, 
Caleb just leaves his binder in the corner. And I go up to the guy hosting and I go, hey, if somebody just leaves their binder, like I can just, it's fair to just go through it, right? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. So I start going through his binder. Didn't talk to Caleb the rest of the night because I had all of his information. Took his cash. Didn't you take his money? Yeah, I took, his, <laughs> yeah, took his cash. Ended up giving the cash back. But I also I won the award for best thief. So that was nice. <laughs> yeah. That was a nice deal. It was fun, dude. But uh, Charles ended up being the killer. She was Greta. Yeah. But Charles, like, I stumbled upon the answer. Give yourself more credit than that, bro. Like, we broke it down. I we know you're trying not to give yourself. Like, you, you, you played a good game. You got yeah, it right. It was fun. I, I, I got the answer correct. Charo, it was like, if multiple teams get it right, whoever's the best description and the most correct description of why they did it. Right. They just they get voted the winner. Mine was like, you know, a couple bullet points of why she was a killer. Charo had a full fucking multiple paragraph. This is why she did it. This is when she did it. The whole thing. Like, to a T, figured out. Yeah, she lives for that kind of stuff. Yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. And it's one of those things, too. You go to a murder mystery party, and, like, you've got to buy in. Otherwise, you're like, this shit's... You're, you could easily be like, this shit's lame. Easily no doubt. If you wanted no to. doubt. And it, the fact that everyone kind of bought in, <laughs> even Caleb, who was Lil Willie, who was obviously written as a black guy. <laughs> it was... He said his binder literally said black speak in it. <laughs> What was the name of the company? Nah. I can't remember. But it was solid. It was a lot of fun. And then with the boys went to the Arizona Bowl. That was cool, too. Yeah, the Arizona Bowl was all, was, was all time. They did a good job. Like, I was talking to, I knew the uh, Cody coordinator for Toledo, and he was just talking about how that entire week, like, Barstool crushes it with how they do their bowl games. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that was fun. It was kind of weird doing the, the CW and the really highly produced thing because we had to cut out multiple segments because the Duke game was running over. So then it condensed everything down. Like, all in all, I probably spoke like 20 seconds total during the entire thing. Mm. Like, we had to really crunch a lot of stuff in. Like, Casey had to basically just, you know, transition it to this interview, that interview, Coach Bowles leaving, this, that. Uh, but it, it, it was cool. And that money line hit, thank God. Yeah, because it was not great for a little bit. Yeah, I was down because we picked, obviously, Wyoming to uh, to cover minus four and a half on Bet the Bus. And I was in, yeah, well, I, I was one of them. They were in on a parlay with Moneyline, Wyoming, and then Moneyline, Penn State. That obviously got, you know, Penn State got mopped. Mm -hmm. And then I had straight up Wyoming minus four and a half. That wasn't happening. So I make an emotional bet fourth quarter. They're down. Toledo's driving a little bit. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm going Wyoming, Moneyline. And it hits and just... Fireworks. They lost. Toledo, Toledo lost. Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but um, that that uh, offensive lineman catching the screen in that game in the first quarter and like running at forty yards. Did yeah. Did y'all watch the game, dude? So game. they they, they run a screen now, and the wide uh, the the running back like touches the ball and it falls out of his hands and then it falls into the the lap of this offensive lineman. He trucks it all the way down. And the rules must be different in college. So I feel like if an eligible receiver touches the ball and then an ineligible so, number gets the ball, it should have been, hey, it's okay to advance, at least in the NFL. So the, uh, the producer who's in our ear, because you didn't have a headset on, like when they were trying to explain that, he was trying to cut in and say, if it's a defender or a referee tips it, mm -hmm. that's where it, that would have been a, a legal play. Got you. But since it was his own offensive teammate, that's why they took it away. Which did suck. That boy housed it too. Like housed he knew what it. to do with the ball. Had oxygen the whole thing after that, dude. It was it was so cool. And so that got taken away. And I want to bring this up. Lions. End of the game. This 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 year or this week. Detroit Lions? Detroit Lions. NFL dude. ball, dude. NFL ball. Going for two. Ballsy. Letting them hang. Dan Campbell letting it hang. And they call a play to Taylor Decker. And I explained this in a little bit of a recap on my Instagram, but Decker actually reached out to me. He's like, You are exactly right. Like, you walk up, you bring multiple offensive linemen to the table, and then he reports to kind of throw off the defense because they know 70 or whoever is going to usually be the guy that reports. This should have been a touchdown. The Lions should have won this game. Great hands by Decker. Great there. hands. Got two guys coming after him. Coming after him. And it kills the Lions because they would have been fighting for that one spot, right? And now they can't, and then the Cowboys. So what are they saying, that he didn't report? They're saying that he didn't report. They're saying that um, they called him ineligible and they said that 70 reported but not decker if you go to like a slow-mo you can see decker bring his hands to his chest 
Did, you don't with see the white. Linemen next to him, with, with a couple linemen. linemen next to him, too. And Brad Allen, oh. the, the head referee. What's that? Goff also pointed. Yes. With like, go talk to the ref. right. Now, the head referee, Brad Allen, he, you see him look at Decker and it seems as if he acknowledges him and then goes off. This is the problem is this Brad Allen guy apparently has already had a couple of missed calls throughout the season. I believe it was uh, the Packers and the Chiefs. There was a no call DPI that really sealed the game. Uh, not in favor of the Chiefs. Who won that game? Anyway, he messed it up real bad to the point. Yeah, to the point where it's like just abysmal. Like this guy needs to probably go to prison. That's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, Yeah, you got to hang him up. You need to turn in your iPad. Yeah, and Dan Campbell in his post-game press conference is like, I don't even want to talk about it. There's nothing that I don't want to talk about, blah, blah, blah. Like this, that was a major killer, a major killer. And it's, and somebody brought up a good point of Detroit making the playoffs for the first time in however long, winning their division since like the 90s or something like that. 93. It was two years old when that happened. Now you're taking away home games for Detroit, taking away money from the franchise, taking away money from the city, like big brain level thing that I'm not even thinking about because of the referee wasn't present in the moment to truly dial in. Okay, this guy's reporting, this guy's not reporting, or they're both reporting. That is just, you can't have that. You cannot have that in football. This is why the the refs got to be better. It's been a, it's been a, details, it's man. been a product of the conversation for so long. How there's so much gray error and decisions and the human error. You cannot have that. You he can't said, have it. Said it was seventy. Like he didn't. He was, he also, he was the last one there. Also, also reported. reported. But because of the formation, seventy was an ineligible number because he was in the tight end position, but he was covered up. Now the wide receiver. He's off the ball and Decker's on the ball, making him the eligible receiver since he reported eligible. So naughty play by just the Lions. Crazy. But you see him go up. Like, why would Decker walk up there? Hey, I'm not reporting. It's like it's it doesn't make any sense. Because you want multiple guys to go up there and you have your sixth man going to say, I'm reporting, and Decker also saying he's reporting, but the defense is probably thinking, Oh, here comes 70 or whatever the number is. Is now reporting. Fuck. Didn't uh, that sucks, Dan Campbell man. like run the refs through the possibility that they might run these plays too? That is, yeah, that's, that's usually what, what happens pre-game. pre-game. Yeah, you say, hey, these are the gadgets we have in. These are the specials we have in. This this number could report. That could, number could report. It's just this DB is pretty think, handsy. Make sure you keep your eye on him. Right, right. I think eventually you just got to be able to review that stuff. Uh, like, is, how do you get around? Because, like you're saying, like in the moment, not being able to be present to make the correct call with all the reviews that you do have that change games or, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. That one's more of like a hearsay. He's just saying that, you know, the ref's basically dying on his hill. Yeah. Cause, right. cause now you get into a point where now you're reviewing dead, dead time in, in games, yeah. which leaves more up for interpretation. Now you have to ele- elevate that to where you're literally putting mics on every player now so that the conversations can be heard when they go review those types okay. of plays. They, the, this is a, there's a lot of gray area in the rules with the NFL college, all of it, but this is an inexcusable act from a referee standpoint. If you need to be able to, that's your job is to be present in the moment. You can't just assume things are going on. Yeah. That's terrible, terrible ball. God, that pisses me. I feel bad for the lions. So yeah, lions can't, I mean, lions will right now are still hosting a playoff game. Yeah, I think that the two seed. But you're you're seed. right about the one seed, like it running through there. Because even if the 49ers lost this week, Cowboys still have the, the shot to go up to one. Yeah, with the Lions losing that game, the Niners clinch the one seed. Oh, they clinch. It's already they, they, done. They clinch the one seed. And but if the Lions just, win that game, now Christian McCaffrey's not sitting out. He has to play in this game, and they have to win their game against the Rams to uh, become the one seed. Well, how do you see this all shaping up? Uh, you got to pull it. You yeah, gotta, pull, up, pull up week yeah. 18. Ravens. You think so? Ravens going to win it all? I think the, the clearest the clearest path here is 49ers Ravens Super Bowl. Yeah, those, it those seems the, that way. Seems that way. But, but dude, you get into the tournament. Anything you're in the happen. tournament, man. 2019 Titans versus the one seed Browns. Ravens at the bank. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the, pulling I think the Bills. I think the Bills over the Browns I'm pulling, doing damage. I'm pulling for uh, the Browns and Bills, dude, on the AFC side. Yeah, I can get on board with dude, that. Think about Flacco. Think about Dog, Flacco going to the Super Bowl. Dethroning. Dethroning Lamar Jackson in Baltimore. And, yes. And you got Cleveland Brown fans chanting Joe Flacco's name when he was with the Ravens for however long. Yeah. 
it's just crazy how this world is. Well, who's that comedian? Stabby, yo, he's so funny, bro. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, it's a joke play. I feel like we've gone from the AFC in the beginning of the season looking like this is the toughest division to now I think the NFC is the strongest division going to the playoffs. Um, the conference? Are we talking yeah, about? the conference, because Miami, mean, Miami has obvious holes. Kansas City's shown they have obvious holes. I can yeah, see Buffalo. At, yeah, I was going to say, like, you look at uh, Green Bay, uh, Tampa Bay, and even Philly now. Philly just lost to the I know. Cardinals. And they play, they play the Giants this week, and who knows? Who knows what's going to happen there? Because they're kind of falling apart. They're doing the opposite of what they did in years past. They're getting colder as the season goes on. Yeah. As opposed to just getting good. stronger. But I think the picture is much more clear on the NFC side for me. Like, the 49ers are the best team, even though they got dusted by... Uh, they, they, they lost real bad to the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens, Ravens destroy are the, uh, the Dolphins. the shit out of people. It is crazy. But I'm anxious to see with that bye week what happens to the Ravens. Because my only yeah. sample size is 2019, yeah. like, which I've already brought up. Is What you got to love, too, is all of Lamar's post-game, post-game conversations. You can just tell he does not give a fuck about what just happened. Yes. It's like it's all... it's. It's Super Bowl this year, a bust basically. He mm-hmm. he doesn't care, and I love listening to him on his post game conversations because you can just see it. Like he's he wants the Lombardi. He doesn't care about nothing else. He's right. like, yeah, yeah, everybody played well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a good game. Yeah, he, he really doesn't say a lot, yeah. and I I just love it. You can just tell he's focused. But I I like of the besides Baltimore Ravens, I like Buffalo. I like Buffalo in this. I think they beat the Chiefs. Yeah, yeah, dude. I think they're gonna. The I, they got a shot. Jacksonville are in it right now. That's yeah. awesome. Man. And Let's this week, Let's see here. This week will be big if Jacksonville loses and the Colts win. Colts take the division. Crazy. So it looks like uh, it's a win and end game with with the Colts and the Texans because Texans are nine and seven. Yeah, but there's there's a bunch of isn't there a bunch of like uh, tiebreakers. So let's go to the standings here. AFC standings. I think the Bengals are out. I think they got eliminated. Yeah, uh, Texans are on the outside looking in. So they're the first team in the hunt, basically. So this is a win and end game between the Colts and Texans. Oh, that's awesome. That is cool. And it's a... Uh, wait. This would be weird now. If the Steelers win, are they in? What's their what's their record? Nine and eight or whatever. They're nine and seven as well. They're number two uh, in the hunt. Yeah, I would assume. <laughs> so Steelers need a win and Texans to lose, right? No. Jack, can you look up uh, Steelers playoff scenarios? Yeah. God, you gotta love it, man. Yeah, this ball's shaping up great. Yeah. In the end of the season. <clears throat> Can the Titans knock off the Jags? No. <laughs> the Jags have too much to play hey, Here's for. all the Steelers playoff hopes. Steelers have five playoff scenarios. So, yeah, they're not winning in. Wait, wait, wait. Steelers. Oh, Steelers. With the Steelers. Steelers win and Jaguar, Jaguars loss or tie. Steelers win and Buffalo loss. Steelers win and Colts, Texans high. Who's Buffalo playing? Buffalo's, I think they're playing Miami for the division. Oh, yeah. That's their best scenario. They got to win because I feel, I believe the Ravens will sit a bunch of guys. Prime you've already, time. You've already, you've already clinched the, uh, the one seed in the AFC. Like, you don't want to get a bunch of guys hurt, maybe playing for a quarter or two, like a preseason game. And then after that, so you got to think the Steelers are going to win that game because they're playing for more than the Ravens are playing. And then, yeah, Buffalo. But I feel like I feel like Buffalo is going to beat Miami. i tell you what you got to look out for right now. Go ahead. No, wait, 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 wait. Raiders are eliminated too, yeah? Never mind. Chiefs are Chiefs are won the AFC West. That's what yeah. you're looking at. Yeah, they've already clinched. Right now, uh, the Chargers are favored one and a half against the Chiefs. Yeah, I, but I've also they can't go up or down in their rankings. Yeah, yeah. So they're gonna probably sit guys. 
I don't know if they can afford to. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta put together. They had another drop, another big drop this past week. Oh, no, the Chiefs are so weird, man, because they are a team you look at and you're like, they're not Super Bowl contenders this year. But then again, it's the Chiefs. So the minute we all start saying, we all pull a Will Compton, we say they're done, is when they just go bet. Yeah, but this is where you're most confident about Chiefs Kingdom falling this year. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I don't think they're gonna make the Super Bowl. I mean, right, right now, as it stands, they would be playing against Buffalo. And you take Buffalo in that. No. <clears throat> they, I don't think they will, though, because no. if Buffalo loses, they'll fall prior to the seven. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, maybe well, they still they, uh, you, the playoff scenario is so wild. If, Buffalo, if, they, if they win, then they win the division. So they'll be the – they'll Buffalo can go from the sixth seed all the way to the two seed with a win. Yeah. That'd be crazy. And then playing in Buffalo would be nuts. In January, yikes! Yeah, after he was, they were essentially pronounced dead. I know. That's gonna be a great game. That'll be a fun game to watch. I like the. Uh, I think the Rams are playing the Niners as well. I like the Rams in that game. I do too. I like the Rams. I think the Rams. In that game. We were talking about the AFC where I'm rooting for Brains, uh, Browns and Bills. I'm kind of pulling for the Rams. Niners, they're one seed. If they go, like if they go, like obviously I'm pulling for the boys. Obviously. Yeah. Well, no, they clinched, so I feel like they're gonna sit out. Like they already talked about saying on McCaffrey, they're gonna they're gonna arrest dudes up. So the Rams are, have an easy path to victory here. And I think they're underdogs. Like plus I'm even four. saying in the Super Bowl. I'm saying on the run to the Super Bowl. Like I would love to see the Rams. I think they're a team you don't want to play right now. Similar they're, to they're the, the Bills. Bills of the yeah. NFC. Even the Browns. I mean, Joe. Flacco. I know. Yeah, but <laughs> eleven and five, insane. They, they everybody they were dead too. They chalked it up. Joe Flacco's coming in. He's three hundred plus the last several games. I wonder what happens if Joe Flacco takes a run at the playoffs. Not saying he has to win the Super Bowl, but let's say he makes it to the AFC Championship or even gets past the first round of the playoffs. You move on from Deshaun Watson. I want Joe to win it all. Dude, that would be insane. Yeah. That would be insane. But do you, so if the, if the Browns win in the first round of the playoffs and then they lose, hypothetical situation, do you walk away from... Deshaun Watson. I don't know. I don't think he can. I, I mean, well, I guess you could, but him. you're taking a massive loss in the whole cap finances because so much is guaranteed to him. Do what? I said trade him back to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be interesting, dude. You you like uh, the Bills better in the playoffs than the Browns? Uh, like, I would be rooting for Josh and the Bills just because we know the boy, but the Browns is kind of like that that Cinderella story that if they end up winning all these games, I, I would like love it. I'd be smiling. I'd be yeah. good for them. Yeah, I'm with that. I like that a lot. But yeah, if they all get in, say they all, all these teams get in, I would want the Bills and I would want probably the Niners, but I'd kind of like to see chaos. So I'd love to see the Rams. I'd love to see the Rams and Bills. So Rams, Bills, Super Bowl. Chaos, Super Bowl? Chaos, Super Bowl, Rams, Bills. That would be nuts. I would love to see Detroit in the Super Bowl. I think that would be so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Yes. They'd be sick too. But yeah. I'll take a, that'd be a fun, that'd be a fun situation. You can't sleep on the Dallas Cowboys. I think you can. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah they're, they're not going to do anything. It's <laughs> trying to give a little bit of hope. <laughs> yeah. But they played tough ball games here down yeah, the road. They, but they make stupid mistakes. And those things, that's the reason why I'm kind of down on the Browns a little bit because Flacco is slinging that thing, but he's also giving the ball up a bunch too. And, is interceptions he? count. Yes, he has a bunch of interceptions. He throws the ball for 500 yards and three I touchdowns, but he's given up two. Like, he's he's ripping it as if he's 38 years old, came off the couch, and he doesn't give a fuck, which is beautiful. Yeah. But when you get to the playoffs, those interceptions cost you a lot more. 13 tutties, eight interceptions. Yeah, he's he's ripping it. He's absolutely ripping it. That's why you kind of like, uh, I like Buffalo over the Browns as far as playing... Uh, the upset team in the playoffs. But the Cowboys, dude. They got defense. The Cowboys are going to get into close games and they're going to do some dumb shit uh, strategically and they're going to lose. And that just sucks because they have talent. They have so much talent. I think it's just the coaching. I bet if the, if the playoff picture's like this, I bet the uh, Buccaneers would sneak Philly. You could, the I bank mean. The show, yeah. man. You could see that happening right yeah. now. Like, the Eagles are... Even though they just lost to the fucking Saints. God damn it. Money on that game, too. 
the Falcons win, are they still in it? If, uh, I don't like think so. Up, uh, playoff scenarios for the Falcons. They are in the hunt. But it's like well, one of those like, has far, to far for down them, the hunt. Yeah, they probably need it. Uh, they probably need a tie to happen. <laughs> All right. Playoff scenarios entering the final week. Lost to the Bears. Uh, I it says that the, they oh, have I mean, to beat the Saints, and then the Bucks have to lose to the Panthers. I mean, that's the you know. The Bucks have to lose. Than the, I thought that they had. The Bucks have to lose to the Panthers. Yeah, Panthers have. Wait, what they do last week? I think they got beat. <laughs> Did they? They didn't beat. They won a couple weeks ago against. <laughs> Let's see. Oh man, that division is so shitty. They all just beg each other to win. <laughs> oh, they got mopped by the Jaguars, twenty-six nothing. But I feel like the AFC South is the best, the worst, best division. What do you mean? Like they might have guys that are like three, <clears throat> three of the four teams might be in the playoffs. But I just don't think any of those teams are competitive enough to make a run. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they they're gonna get in because things are just falling that way. Like this is a year where they're similar to the uh, NFC least when they're talking about the NFC East and everybody's yeah. fighting to get in. Yes, yes. But sitting around five hundred. Yeah, I mean all of them, all of them except for the Titans are nine and seven, right? They're all nine and seven. We had a win and in game, and I think we were eight seven and one that year against the Giants. Fuck, it's crazy how it works out. And then you have a team scrapping for the seventh seed and they have like 10 wins. Yeah. That is a team that's hot. Like the Giants back in 2000 and what was it, eight? When they beat the Patriots? 2008, yeah. Was, and they, were the, they were the lowest rated seed. Yeah. Didn't the, e- the Eagles Steelers did that. Did too against the uh, Cardinals. Eagles did that as well in the Super Bowl. They were the sixth seed, right? When? When they won the Super Bowl a few years back. Oh, with Foles? I don't They were pretty solid. Yeah, but I think they... Maybe they were a lower seed. I think they were a lower... I don't, I don't think they won the division. I'll say that. Dude, let's talk about the new year. Let's do it. An optimum nutrition. Are you ready to unlock more in 2024? JP, are you ready to unlock more in 2024? Adding gold standard 100% whey protein by Optimum Nutrition to your workout gives you 24 grams of high quality protein to support muscle building and recovery in rich, delicious flavors. An essential piece for building a routine that helps you get more with your workouts. Available at your favorite stores like Walmart, Amazon, and at OptimumNutrition.com. Put the world's number one sports nutrition brand to the test with Optimum Nutrition. Boys, what kind of what kind of physical health goals do we have in 2024? Let's start. I will getting absolutely Lean. shredded. Oh. Lean, mean New machine. Year's. New Year's same goal. So <laughs> cut, it's unreal. Lean meats, high protein, clean veggies, and yeah, and reading a little more. Not on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> physical books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talking just straight body. Yeah, I guess so. Like, like mine, I don't have like uh, pinpoint. It's got to be this percent body fat. But being around two fifteen, zero low back pain is my is a New Year's resolution of mine because I've had it forever. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, like my structure is the morning routine: thirty grams of protein in every meal through food that gets me up to like around one sixty to one eighty, and then get the rest up to my up to like 220 of protein through like essential amino acids, glutamine, you know, drinks and shakes and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But mine's basically 30 plus grams of protein every meal. In the morning, the first one's going to have no carbs, so protein and fat. Um, then I, cold tubbing four times a week or cold water immersion four times a week. I'm going to get this shit. I, I'm like in the middle of it too, but get it kind of like printed so that way I can check like as the weeks go on and switch them out every week. So that way, I, you know, I hit on all my you know, vitamins and minerals, like supplements I take in the morning, like have it for the, you know, right when I wake up, breakfast time, ones with the meal, ones that are three days a week. So I'm like trying to structure out that way mm-hmm. versus having like the result there. Cause I just feel like if I just dial in those things, the result will have, come. Yeah. 
enjoying the process. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I would jump on, I'll jump on board with that. Like I, for me, it's establishing, which I've kind of done towards the end of the year. I'm like 36 days in of doing every single day, some sort of like cold water therapy, whether like if we're on the road, when we were in Arizona, I just had to take a cold shower. I took a cold shower, but like waking up in the morning, hitting a routine for myself. And then for me, it's all about like dialing in my optimal health from like a, a gut health standpoint. Like I've still got a bunch of issues from all those anti-inflammatories. Like just get the body running the exact way I want to and mm-hmm. paying uh, more attention to like uh, longevity things, not just like cosmetic things as far as like you want to look better and all that, but like the stretching, the, uh, the stability in the core, the knee pain that it's, all, it's always going on, trying to figure out a way to get that knee pain a little bit better. But yeah, I think this is going to be a nice little year. Yeah. The routine is absolutely everything. It is. And it, when you do it, it's like, it sucks at first, but once you like get in, like what I've noticed, like being this far into it now is it's enjoyable. Like even when I wake up tired, I know, Hey, at the end of this routine, I'm going to feel way more awake and I'm be able to get my shit done today. Mm. And it's truly like, like I had a, this coffee you brought me today, but I have, I've kind of like not had as much coffee, like feel more consistent energy throughout the day. Mm. And it's like, you just make it a priority and I, I, I mess with it. I'm really enjoying it. You create that momentum. Yeah. Cause even if, if I go a few days without like doing something or say I, couldn't get a workout in or I didn't work out. Um, you, like, I just know in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, if I just wake up early the next morning and do a workout, like, I know that that will, that will get everything going. Yeah. Because waking up after days of, like, even with holiday season, you get kind of in a, I got kind of in a mode of when I got to sleep in, I'd sleep till, like, 7, 7.30. And then you're just slower to get out of bed versus, like, waking up when the alarm goes off at, like, 5.30, 5.45. And just, like, it's that much harder after you kind of create the holiday season of, eating good sweets, like sleeping a little bit longer, having, you know, kind of like having fun in the mornings, slower in the mornings. Uh, but once you, it's like, yeah, I just know in my head, I'm like, man, if I just wake up early the next morning, I just got to get the fuck up, get moving, like cold shower this morning. And like that will, that will start to create that momentum. But uh, I'm with you. I think it's going to be a, a fun year. For me, I got to write it out. Like I'm somebody, I have to write things down or it'll, I have to make the invisible visible. If not, I will always justify something because I haven't like put it out into the universe, Uh I feel like. So if I like write it down, if I print it out, if I put it up so that way it's in front of my face when I go into the pantry on checking things off, that way I don't miss whatever vitamins. Like you can just kind of go by the seat of your pants sometimes. Like, man, did I take that this morning? I kind of can't remember. Oh, I'll make sure to take it when I get home. Then I think I already took it because I thought I was going to take it when I got home. So if I just write stuff out, if I map it out and put it in front of my face, then I know like, I'll create some momentum. Mm-hmm. What about you, JP? I just got to get cut up for August 17th. Great day. The wedding day. Oh, it's it's in? Yeah, I mean, unofficially, officially. Okay. Down in right before the fall, too. That's big of you. Yeah. That's so, big I mean, that's pretty much my goal, mm-hmm. my fitness goal. Yeah? Yeah, I got to be looking nice. you have any, like, uh, like, a different discipline or anything that you're trying to implement? Uh, I mean, definitely could do more cardio. I, I want to start swimming. Get back into the water? Yeah, but it's just, swimming's not convenient, like, as far as gym memberships and stuff like that. But, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Mitch, you got you got some New Year's resis? Yeah, I want to do, like, fitness-wise, are you talking about? Yeah. I want to do more cardio. Like, I want to get more into, like, I'm I'm not somebody who can just go for runs. But, like, I'm thinking if I get into, like, more, like, intramural sports, like playing like more football, like get into a couple of like football leagues, maybe play some beach volleyball when it gets warmer outside. Um, just trying to stay active that way because I still have like that competitive itch. Um, just trying to stay more active that way and, and have fun with it. Nice. Did you, did you give yours? Um, nothing really changing from last year. Just consistency is like huge for me. And like y'all are saying, routine. Um, so continuing that, honing in on a couple other things. What those are, no clue. But always room for improvement. I like it. Is there anything, obviously there is, but is there anything outside of a body standpoint? Obviously, we have other news resolutions. We kind of all just hit the body for a second. <laughs> all great. Are... We, all, we all think it. Cars were lined up more this morning at Boost. At, at Boost and you just know, like, there was one cat in there fucking humming. Was do, like, do, doing a tank top? Possibly. Yeah, there's like he this had like light. Sh- he had like shorter yeah, light skin tight cat. Shirt. 
He was no, in that trailer for like 45 minutes. Yeah, bro. I'm talking running at like eight, nine miles an hour mm. for minutes at a time. And then we take like a quick break and then get back on it. Yeah, that's crazy. But I'm just saying at like high speed running. <laughs> like, I had to jump in there early this morning because they get up. Yeah. And it was kind of like the same crew of people in there just a little bit earlier. Oh, really? I, saw, I think I saw that dude. I was like, he is fucking He was, he was humming by the time I walked in there. He just got here. Let it happen. Um, do you have stuff outside of, outside of uh, fitness? Yeah, dude. I, I want to, uh, like, from a benchmark standpoint, I want to at least read one book a month. I, like, I think that's a, a solid. I, I read more than I ever have in years past in 2023. But I just think taking a next step of, like, consistently reading, whether it's, like, self-help book type of stuff or just like, 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 what'd you say about Charlie? Like read what you love oh, until you no, love to Naval. read. Naval. That's what Naval says. Yeah. So I, I've like picked up the pace of like reading and stuff like that. I'm, I'm in the middle of one right now. Like I got it like a few days ago. I'm already like 150 pages in. And so just kind of like this unique pursuit of acquiring like different skills, whether it's like financial literacy, whether it's like trying to look at like uh, learning a new language, or like reading, just reading comprehension in general, like trying to take the information I'm reading and process it more, like instead of just like checking the box of reading. But I think that's like, for me, I enjoy that. I, I'm starting to find myself enjoy that. And so taking the next step of like putting a number on it will definitely help. Love that. Yeah, a book a month would be nice. Right? It's just discipline too. Yeah. It is like, a, it's such like a lost art, it seems like. Like picking up an actual book, <laughs> we, you know, we like just that lost art. So much. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Lost art of reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But how many? How often? Like when you're a kid, you you're a kid. You see your parents like picking up a book and reading, and now we have all this access to the internet and social media. Is like you don't see anybody our age with an actual hardcover book in their hands. I don't feel like anybody in their 20s and 30s really did. A, you know, I feel like people do a whole lot of reading outside of having to growing up in school, and then maybe as you like get older and realize, you know, that reading kind of fucks. It kind of fucks. It kind of fucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I like, I like the, uh, I like the reading goal. And uh, another one that I was going to have to go with like reading is making sure I write like, uh, notes, like a book summary mm -hmm. and like, just like writing more. I just think like writing, whether it's journaling every day, uh, I got Charo, which I think I might get us all one is there's this uh, five-minute journal where it has everything kind of, like, laid out for you, like, what to write about in the morning, what to write about at night. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, like, writing would be really good. It was something I wanted to do last year and obviously did not do it. So I want to, like, hold myself to that going into this year. I just got to structurally fi figure out, like, what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. my brother-in-law did this thing this past year where he tried to do it, you know, once a week or a few times a month and then, you know, that just changes, but write down something that positive in that week or in that moment, and then go back and reread them. Cause then you'll realize like a s very small thing can feel like such a victory in that week. Mm -hmm. When you read it at the end of the year, you're like, Oh damn, like even that little thing was tight that week. And you just kind of like, you know, reflect on that kind of stuff. Right. I'm with that. I like that boys. Anything in the back? We're all good with reading. JP, you got one. Yeah, I mean, I was reading one book a month was mine as well. Um, still, like last year, I'm just making my bed every single day, which I did hit. Did you really? Yeah. A first win. First win. Win right out of the bed. So continue that. More uh, journaling for sure. And, I mean, I was, I, I had one because Sydney and I were coming up with them yesterday, but it's escaping my mind. I might just concur with y'all. On the uh, significant other, like Char and I, we, um, uh, we were talking about it yesterday. We're going to do like a weekly discipline. So whether it's yoga or something that we can do it together in the morning, like health-wise, fitness-wise, whether it's sauna and uh, cold, the cold tub or yoga or boxing or whatever it is, like one daily, one discipline a week. And then uh, we're going to do like a bi-monthly date night. So she plans one one month. Or she plans one one week, I plan one, you know, the next, after the next couple of weeks. And then, like, one where we have to be intentional on getting our, uh, getting, like, a group of friends together to, like, do something. Whether it's a murder mystery or, like, just doing something where we are, like, intentional about, like, being around friends. 
Yes, one of ours was at the end of each month, sitting down and holding each other accountable about if you are keeping up with your. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. Goals. That is a good one. Be intentional about being around friends is a really good one. Yeah, because you know how it is. Yeah, especially doing as much as we do. Like, I feel like because we travel so much, when I get home, I just want to be with my family, mm -hmm. and I don't take the time to like check the other social boxes. You're right at all, but doing it. I like that. Yeah. I like that one. And whether like, as we were talking about like a quarterly thing too, is like whether it's the murder mystery, like each, like if it was us one time, just because again, monthly, it's like the minute it doesn't happen one month then it can kind of fizzle out. Yeah. So if like you're the monthly thing, if it's just like dinner or something like that, but a quarterly thing where it's like, Hey, we'll host one. You guys are responsible for hosting a quarter. You know, you get another pair of friends that host at their house, whether it's a Chandler's or something like that. Yeah. But just doing one to where it's like on that crew. I think it would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, quick pivot. We got to give a huge shout out to Michael Chandler. Yeah. Oh, Dude, yes, what a yes. 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 Incredible. Literally, the guy has sat for a year waiting for this Irishman to finally pull the trigger. And it's, it's big. Yeah. It's, it's big. massive, man. My understanding is it's not like 100% done yet. Like, there still has to be a couple of dominoes that yeah. fall. But With everything on Connor. But. It seems like things are pointing that way. Does it um, seem like it is going to be a 185? I think so. Yeah, I think. I, I wouldn't know the answer to that, but if Connor's saying 185 and Mike's on social I think media. International saying, yeah. Fight Week is that's when it's going to happen. I, my thought was, my question mark was if it's actually going to be a 185. What would you think it would be? Like 175? Lighter. <laughs> yeah, 170. Lighter. If, it's at, if it's at 185, the only reason McGregor wants to do that is so. That if he does win, he can say, I have wins at middleweight, welterweight, uh, lightweight, and featherweight, which obviously he'd be the only person. But He's Mike would have the only to, person with three. I just, that's not even, he, he Mike probably, what, walks around at 185. Mike is 185 right now. That's like what I'm Mike saying. was saying, it benefits Mike more than it benefits Yeah. Hunter. Why does it benefit Mike more? Because he's more naturally built, like, at that weight. Connor is like, eating his butt off to be 185 mm, when he's not on all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Because all you see is these photos of Connor. Oh, juiced up. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. It's so clear he's on, he was on something. But there's, I feel like there's a whole bunch of stuff. He's still got to go through the USADA protocol. Well, they're not with USADA anymore. Or what, whichever. Whichever drug testing thing they have to do. I really don't know. I just know it's like not officially official yet. Yeah. Seems like it's going to happen, though. But that yeah. is so sick, Yeah, bro. I think it's like June 28th, June 29th. June 29th. That's uh, International Wait, Fight Week. We'll have to... I feel like that would be a weekend where, or the week that we would do, like, Beer Olympics. Oh, no. Yeah. We are going to that fight. Yeah, we asked... Oh, yeah, no doubt. I'm just saying, like, the last year, I think we did the Beer Olympics on the last week. Like, we're going to have to dictate. We're going to have to... That, that is what we will be doing. Yeah. The last week. We will be there. We Vegas. will... Vegas. 100%. We will be there. Yeah, bet it'll be in Bucket the sphere, least. too. Sphere of September. I know, but that's what they say now. But I think, yeah, that is true. Why wouldn't you do McGregor? Yeah, coming back. Here? Yeah, maybe it's like, uh, I mean, it's only six months away. Yeah, I wish. Maybe, it was I, I don't know 100. the planning and all that, but that would be insane if it was at the Sphere. Insane. Ah, oh, that's gonna be so much fun. It's so fucking hype. Yeah, I really, I want him to win so bad. I know, man. That, uh, once again, there's a, I feel like there's an easy path to victory on Connor. What do you mean? Take him to the ground and sit on him for a round. Tire his ass out. Because yeah. from what my understanding, and I'm very green when it comes to like understanding uh, combat. But JP, you're our pseudo UFC guy. Connor's incredibly precise, throws good, and he moves really well on his feet, and he's not the best grappler. So if Mike, who's a great wrestler, takes him to the ground, wears him out, putting his body on him the whole entire time for a round, round and a half, make it boring, and then make it fucking ugly. Bro, this is... But Mike should... It's like Mike should be doing that every fight. He just doesn't do I it. Know, I know! I'm even know. asking him, and he's like, oh, the spirit, the spirit of the fighting. The warrior spirit. The warrior it's spirit. Like, that's great. That's like, great. That, yes, I, absolutely. But I feel like that's all of Mike's fights. It's like, hey, he should play to his strength of wrestling here. Mm. Now, like, even though uh, Connor is precise with his striking... He's got good 
defense on wrestling. Like he would have to get him to the ground, which could be a that wears you out, like trying to take people down. If it doesn't work, it kind of like hurts your uh, gas tank. Yeah. What do you? How do you see it going, JP? Or how how do you think Mike should go about it? I mean, I, the same way everybody else in the world thinks Mike should go about it. God, I know, but he never will. I do think he'll. I think he's gonna go for more takedowns than people are thinking just because I think he wants a, a massive, like, slam. Yeah. And I think he wants to add that. So he'll probably try that in the first round, and I bet he will get one. Yeah. And then he'll probably, in the second round, probably stand the up. The thing you can't, yeah, the thing, like, for Mike, it could potentially be boring because I think Mike needs to wait for his opportunity, like, be patient to try to get a takedown. Because if you're if you're pressing Connor, Connor's very good at, like, counter-striking, like, understanding when Mike drops his head, just binking him. Yeah. He's going to have to wait for Connor to make uh, that's 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 what I that's like Connor's my good at him. fighting backwards. Yes, uh, there you go. Yes. That's a, that's a cool line. I think but like yeah, I when Mike sits on the bus and he says warrior spirit, <laughs> I, I want to make it a bloodbath. It's like all right, great. But let's say he does take the game plan into I'm going to be the smartest way, easiest path to victory as possible. When you start hearing the boos, let's say it's in the sphere of them kind of just dancing around each other, Where's Mike's mental of being like, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to have to just go and... <laughs> he's going to be like, fuck it. He's going to go out there swinging out of the game. Hard. Yeah. But I think even when if Mike tries to wrestle, it won't be boring because he does everything so violently. Mm. It's not like... He's not going to be like, I don't know, like some of these other guys that just are No, no doubt. Exciting. But the wrestling to happen, I think it has to happen from like a patient standpoint to where maybe that's where it's sinking. Because if he... If he tries to go after him, again, not only are you making yourself more vulnerable and playing into a strength of Connors of being a great fighter backing up, mm -hmm. but uh, then if you fail on takedowns, you're you're wearing yourself out. You're yeah. wearing yourself out. And that's not where you want to be. <laughs> Maybe just take the Diaz approach and just slap that front leg for a while. Yeah. Just yeah. kick that front calf over and over and over again. I don't know. I feel like the titanium uh, shin bone, yeah. Taylor. <laughs> Mike, I, Mike has a path to win this fight. It's the impatience that worries me. I mean, I'm sure he's probably thinking, man, it would be sick to knock him out. <laughs> yeah. There's so, so many mental games. Yeah. Just throw it in there. It's like, we can make up this uh, uh, strategy. That strategy can be thought of. Then he's like, oh, okay, I'm going to surprise everybody by going in, just going fucking nuts. But he won't be surprising anybody if he goes nuts. <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah. Should we get to the uh, twisted question? Yeah, I'm down. It's been a good pause. It's been a fun pause. Yeah. Twisted question brought to us by Twisted Tea, the smoothest hard iced tea out there. It's holiday season, football games, and game days. Playoffs are coming. Keep it twisted with Twisted Tea. Uh, bring in the new year with the Twisted Tea today. This question is brought to us not only by Twisted Tea, but Mitch. He gets to start off the new year. Maybe he'll start off with some better questions. Mitchy? This one is from. Ryan Sarecki. So on, you're not doing the question? No. On Instagram. Twisted question for the boys. Would you take one continuous 24-hour shit once a year or full-on shit yourself once a year? Full-on shit myself once a year. I don't Let me know. I think, I think I would. You think about that. Shit. Think about the time you get just shit by yourself. Think about your legs okay. would it work? Yeah, yeah. Your legs would your legs would fall asleep after an hour, and you're like, I got 23 more hours of this. And think about this. You ain't gonna be thinking about your legs if you got shit coming out of you for 24 hours straight. I mean, your New Year's resolution is not gonna hit. Yeah. <laughs> think about this though. Been a rough day. Maybe the boys. There's a big altercation. It's been long. Blah blah blah. You go home. Rue's yelling. Charles bitching at you. Where are you gonna go take those five minutes? She knows you shit once a year for 24 hours. You can't go take five minutes in the bathroom to yourself. Scroll the scroll the phone a little bit. Pants still on. You're just saying this is the part shitting yourself? I'm saying if you only shit yourself 24 hours one time a year, then there's no that classic dad move. You're like, I go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Mm, that's a great point. Yeah. But if you See, just... I'm thinking of the upside of shitting, but you're also talking about the upside of shitting. Yes. And I'm thinking... Shit, my pants once a year, it's like, do I get to pick? If so, yeah, okay. If not, it's like, that'll be funny as hell. I mean, I'm just on the bus one day, and I just shit my pants. I'm like, it, you know how it is. I, I got to get out of here. I'll be right back. Yeah. Just yeah, keep just, a change of clothes in the back at all times. To me, that's like, that's an easy boy. Sold. 
Sold. Four for one, Mitch. It's all right. What's a dub? What's a, yeah, what's a dub for Mitch? I thought that I, I thought say, that actually uh I would say if it's like w would anybody take the 24 hour shit? No. Was so anybody not, on the 24 hour shit and then got swayed? No. I, I was on the 24 hour shit. But did, did you, you get, get swayed? swayed? You guys pointed at each other. I yeah, you saying saying the the uh like get, take some five minutes away and just have some time by yourself, that's what switched me. Yeah. So I guess a good twisted question would be like the ending, multiple choices like everybody walks away like the best i think the best twisted question we've had is the miss every light or make every light or the best parking spot because we've walked away and we all still have our our choices and the reason why we have those choices but the shit thing it's like we all came to the conclusion imagine wiping after a 24 hour oh my dump God. oh i think it's the same <laughs> Probably gonna be the same cleanup, think right? Think about all the flushing you got to do because if that yeah. bowl is gonna get filled up, yeah, Fill you gonna die because you could die. You could legit die. Yeah. <laughs> place an IV. Yeah, you got that IV. Come in, place an IV on you while you're shitting. They're smelling it. You gotta eat your dinner Hanging in the corner. You gotta eat with that smell just eat. coming oh up. Oh my god! And you know, like 15 minutes from now, that thing's coming out of you. Will said it can't be that bad. <laughs> Uh, on the wiping, on the wiping. Dog, think of how, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the wiping part. Your butthole's open the, for 24 hours. Yeah, but it's still gonna, you still gotta wipe it the same. It's, it's gonna be raw. No, oh, dude, you be, because like, you're, yeah, cause you're it'll, going it'll, to wipe in between shits, because you're gonna have to flush. Right. It's gonna be a No, I'll just deal. sit and flush. You just hit the courtesy flush. But you have your asshole all year hasn't worked once, and then you're essentially feeding shit through your asshole, rubbing against it. You're, you're talking about, but uh, hang on now. You're talking about hang on now. Like, hang rashing. on now. You're talking about blood. But I'm assuming in this situ hypothetical situation that my body is built to do that. If I'm only shitting once a year, like it's like okay, here it comes. Yeah, it's not to loosen I, up. It knows how to work. I guess I guess you would be right because if your body wasn't built for that, you're legit dying the first time it happens. You might be dying if you never shit for the other 364 days. That's correct too. I think like a one-time, one-time dispense. At least that's what it sounds I like. I think he's trying to make it seem like, would you just get all your shitting out of the way in one time, which I don't think there's a... When you said that, there, that to me is like, you get the upside of shitting every day. Sometimes a couple. Sometimes three. You shit three times a day to get that looked at. I, uh, no, that's I want... Good thing. I think he'd rather he swallow his free? Food. Or he doesn't chew his food. I think two's healthy. I think two's healthy. I think three's fine. <laughs> But you know it ain't coming out solid. Is it always coming out solid? Yeah. Maybe you're all right. I think he's good. Maybe he is good. Maybe I'm fucked up. Yeah. Maybe I need to shit more. I know I'm fucked up. Once in the morning, after lunch, and then after dinner. See, I'm usually once in the morning and then once in the uh, late afternoon, early <laughs> evening. Whenever I'm finding that, that moment. Whenever I'm picking my shot. Okay, sweetheart. I got to go to the restroom. It's going to be a minute. Boom. And you don't get that with 24 hours. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you need that. It's your time. It's for you. Um, you guys ready to wrap this thing up? Yeah. For those of you who stuck, along, stuck around for this long, next week, I believe I'm correct in saying this, next week there will be a new edition of Busting with the Boys, correct? I don't know. January 6th, I think, is the first day. Ooh, Ooh. what are we doing? Graphic designer. Oh, I thought you were saying we are going to the Capitol. <laughs> yeah, come on, bro. Yeah, My that's bad. Jan six. Jan six. Like the boys are off. We're off. We, yeah. That's the holiday. That's holiday now. <laughs> that's but holiday for bus, and it's on our calendar. Right. <laughs> hey, best year yet. But yeah, you're right. Gonna be the best year yet. New graphic designer coming on board. Mm -hmm. Shout out. What, is Connor? Cooper. Cooper. You called him Connor in our interview, though. I think you just called him Connor, didn't you? I said Coop. I, yeah, I got a. I got a. Connor I Stallions on joining the bus. Yeah, Connor Stallions joining the bus. <laughs> we would have information on all the other podcasts. Yeah. I wonder what he was doing during that game yesterday. Sure. Was he? <laughs> you lying. No, Live streaming. You know he's got on. You know he had something. That'd be that so funny. In. You know he had an earpiece in. That's awesome. All right, boys. Big hugs, tiny kisses. Get the merch. Subscribe, unsubscribe. We are going to outdo 2023. We love you so much. It's all because of you. See ya.